Okay, so everyone hopped back into substance. I mean, y'all, most of y'all are probably already in substance, but, uh, but yeah, so this is a, uh, this is a little NPC in my game. He's a, a, a blacksmith that's very full of himself. Uh, very jacked, very large. And uh, yeah, so he's all, he's all textured up. Uh, it, it, the style of my game doesn't have any like huge painting, you know, like I'm not like putting in like skin detail on these NPCs, maybe for the main character I would, but you know, other than that, this is all we got. Freddie Mercury vibes. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but something that we can do in substance that is just super sick because people were talking about like sharing what they, what they've, they've been up to in there. Um, also for the, um, for the, the texturing assignment, I'd like you to, to render out, you know, your character. And it's like super easy, super easy in substance. Boom, bang. If you look at the top right corner of your uh, little viewport, you have just the camera icon. And let's click that bad boy right here. Boom. Your computer's gonna like freeze up and be like, whoa, what the hell's happening? What's going on? And then, my god all right so everything decided not to okay pretty cool pretty cool one second <laughs> <laughs> my god i like i like that uh, all right so i just pressed f to to focus on the character because it just got lost in like the hdri sky but i like setting that up as like it's super easy one click and then it just fucks up immediately uh but yeah so it just just press f to focus on your your uh your character and uh then yeah you just you it like you can see that it's it's using a little bit of a um a rendering engine where it shoots the rays of light very similar to maya very similar and yeah you can just get a straight up nice little image right there um there might be some flickering in here let's see if we can fix that with render settings try turning on if like you see a bunch of this like glowy stuff we might be able to fix it with this i i don't know I've, i haven't had completely uh, a complete success with this but uh, if you turn caustic sampler enabled if you turn that on sometimes that can can mitigate it you know but yeah you can see like like it's probably not carrying over on zoom but you like um it's getting a, a, a good amount of those out of the the elbow there you can also crank up your samples in here and get like a higher quality render but like you know not necessary definitely not necessary and yeah so you once you have that just click this little magnifying glass right here boom then you can do save render and we can just save that as like a jpeg i'm just gonna save it to my uh, desktop i'll name it blacksmith There, boom. And then back in Discord, I can just go to my desktop, find that image, blacksmith, and let's just drag those into the art sharing channel, y'all. Boom. Let's just see what everyone's got going on. You know? Let's do a little show and tell, except no tell. I'm not going to require you guys to talk about your own piece, but yeah. Just re render out what you got going on in substance and bring it in there. Boom, bang. I like to see, I like to see what everyone's uh, got colored up. Because honestly, you guys have some sick low poly models. Like, I, I'm, I'm excited to see. Oh, also, Sarah has a fucking sick shield. Could this you show so us how cool. to do the render again? Yeah. Uh, so let me click out of this. So you're in your default little viewport right here. Then you go up to the top right right here click this little camera it'll bring you to this view remember originally it like brought me to like a weird view that i couldn't really see stuff in um so i had to press f to to focus on the model where's the camera the oh it's top it's right the... top oh, right okay. up here and yeah 
But yeah, you can also change the environment that you're in. Uh, if you don't like this sort of lighting, you can like change it to something more basic. There's um, do they have the studio in here? Let's see. Uh, not exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, but yeah, they have. Oh, there it is. There it is. Like you can have this like interior studio lighting. If that's more appealing to you. We could have any of these, really. Like, uh, and they they clearly all, all have different effects on the lighting, but you know, just whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do. Um, let's see, I have no background. That's not that's not a problem, Diamond. Uh, no worries about that. Uh, but yeah, I just want to see what y'all have been up to how do you save yeah yeah so go up to the uh little magnifying glass up here and that's going to open up a bunch of stuff in here uh and what we're looking for is a save render it's going to save it out as a jpeg somewhere so it's this little magnifying glass and then save render Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's up? I don't see a magnified glass on mine. Oh, really? Uh, do, what What do you see instead? Um, I just see kind of like just the two top and bottom one, but there's no middle for the magnifying I mean, glass. Mine is the same way. You just have to scroll down on the top one, and then you'll yeah, see. Yeah, save renders all the way at the bottom of that like top box. That top panel. Just scroll down. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. version of substance pain are you using mike i'm using the most up-to-date one like are, do they have that button in a different spot for like different versions or something it looks like it's already opened on ours oh, so i think it could be because we're using the free version maybe i don't know um i'm just thinking maybe the ui might be slightly different but it's yeah. still there it's just that it's a top panel i'll take a screenshot so you can see yeah that'd be sick because I, I i can't really see what what y'all are are talking about oh hell yeah Oh, weird. Okay, so that's just like open by default. All right, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, you can just scroll down in there, and then it should be in that in that panel there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Thanks for thanks for sending that because uh, otherwise a lot of people might be lost. Like, where the hell this menu mic? <laughs> I just have the fake made up buttons on my end. Um. But yeah. Oh hell yeah, y'all. Hey. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's look at this. Yeah, Sarah, this is super sick. <laughs> what, how how much blunt trauma did this shield cause to people? <laughs> was my question. Who are your enemies? <laughs> yeah, what did they do to you to to deserve this? Uh, nah, she just spill strawberry jam on it. That's just it. spilled a little bit of strawberry jam. <laughs> That's it. Okay, I I'm down for some strawberry casualties as opposed to you know. Uh, human casualties murder shield, you know, murder shield. what's best about it is that they were all just brushes that are already available and it's like i used mm -hmm. a basic brush a little bit of height and i actually put the roughness so that it's at zero so there's some shininess to it because you know blood is kind of shiny right mm -hmm. so 
Um, and then I just variate the colors of red and you just paint on it. And imagine when you're splattering, I'm going to sound like Hannibal Lecter or can't, or like <laughs> Dexter, but when you, if you splatter something, it will fly in one direction. That's a typical thing, like typical logic. If you think of physics, right? Mm -hmm. So I was just trying to imagine if this shield was used to like cut people's heads off, where would the blood splatter? So that's my thing. And then I went back into it and then started seeing how much I can get away without like re like bit like what was it bump mapping it like like because it like carving into your bake with mm -hmm. the just like the negative the height and that's how i got that slash in there as well so oh, yeah just seeing how much i could push it <laughs> who needs a weapon when i have anger issues <laughs> 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 exactly and then yeah. on i posted the back of it. it there's a there's a handprint stamp that's what gave me the idea so i was like oh well i'll just <laughs> put there's... bloodied fingerprints on it and it'll be fine yeah you'll the see one. it on the on the the top one there's another like handprint on the other side so it's actually really easy to achieve the blood you just had to just use your imagination a little bit and people are like sarah your imagination's scary your imagination <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, handprint right there you just yeah. that's just a stamp you know there you're just go. like oh cool <laughs> yeah did you use the uh the stencil for the uh the paint oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 it was just, uh, it was already available. So I was just playing around and then I erased a little bit to have that worn in look. And Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. No, that's a hundred percent what I was, what I was looking for. Like, mm -hmm. I just want y'all playing around with these tools because they're, they're fun. There's like one of the funnest parts of the, of the process. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so sick, <laughs> literally. And, uh, you know, cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah. Where's the camera icon again? I don't see it. Rodney, uh, you might not have it. It might just be like, so look at this menu. There's the, this this menu's got kind of detached in older versions and kind of put on top of it. You can see uh, it's under general. I posted under, under general. general. Okay, yeah. yeah. So look at this screenshot that Sarah sent around. We got render settings here, and then it's just in this panel. So then you you scroll down, and then you'll see the save render button. Also, Rodney, the camera icon is to the top right. If you're asking about that, to get to that this whole thing, it's also in that screenshot. Yeah, it's a, this this one right here. Oh no, um I saw it for a bit and then it um it kind of got shifted to like the side of my screen and I clicked reset UI and now it's uh it's just flat out gone. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know myself. <laughs> reset UI. Uh, let's see. Um let's get out of here. We, we might be able to go, go to mode. Let's see. Let's see if rendering right here does that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So go to mode instead and go to rendering. Oh, okay. Um, I just noticed that uh, render settings was a uh, was a uh, unselected, so I selected it, and uh, now I see the display settings. There we go. Okay. Sweet. Appreciate, Sweet. It. Appreciate it. No problem. No problem. Uh, yeah, let's keep looking at these. These are just, these are so dope. Let's scroll back up. Hell yeah. Oh, damn. Look at that fur detail. Look at that. It was so tedious, but it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it paid off. Like, it looks really good. It looks really good. Yeah. <laughs> it is so tedious. Yeah, it's pretty much like 3D for you, you know? Uh, yeah, but uh, it was cool. I kind of wish I had the rest of the body because it kind of looks like he's uh, taxidermy and it makes it a little sad. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Like, okay. I mean, though, the way he's like cut off too, that's like exactly where they like. Yeah, I mean, I guess he'd be it. a good, you know, taxidermy head. Yeah, oh, you okay. could uh, you can make like the, the wooden plaque behind him and, uh, you know, oh, just put that in there. that's true. <laughs> that's so pretty sad really complete the piece there but yeah this look the first detail is so sick on this did awesome. you just go in with a brush to do this or, or did you just yeah i used like a kyle brush it's like one of the fiber brushes and then mm. just did like three different layers of uh color nice yeah did you did you have a base layer of like the darker color underneath or yeah so i did like a dark brown uh, as the base color or uh, the body and like a darker one for the muzzle and just kind of worked, worked with it until it looked okay. <laughs> oh yeah. 
Oh, it looks, looks awesome. Kyle, Thanks. love that guy. <laughs> yeah, he's a good guy. <laughs> he's, he's got some good brushes. But yeah, this is awesome stuff. Thanks. Love to see it. Then we got Sean Wick. I like this. I like this. Oh, uh, Sean, I, in my uh, my feedback, it, this also applies to a lot of people. Like same with this character. Uh, soften out these normals in um, in uh, in Maya. Like you, you can you can. Let me just show you guys what I'm talking about. Uh, I've showed it quite a few times before, but just to reiterate, like so, see how smooth my my model is. It's because I'm using my normals to do that. So if you go in and mesh display soften edge, it softens it up a lot. Um, if you go to harden edge, it's the it's the exact opposite. Oh wait, sometimes it doesn't work. You got to do um, set to face instead. So this is like what our normals look like by default. So yeah, make sure you go in mesh display, soften edge, you know, then you'll get that nice smooth sort of shading on the character. Shall I go back to Maya and then soften the edge and then repaint it again? Uh, no, what you can do, well, well, kind of, yeah, you'll soften edge and then you'll file export selection. You'll export your character out again. Mm -hmm. And then over in Substance, what you can do is just go to Edit Project Configuration. And then you select that file again, that file that you exported. Um, and then it'll bring it in and be like, OK, that's, that's what we're doing. So I would have the color file open and then do project configuration? Uh, yes, yes. So, okay. so smooth out the normals, export that again over that same file that you had before, and then edit project configuration yeah. file, and then navigate to that file in there. And that'll, that'll update it for you. Oh, okay, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Mike, how do I zoom out and focus on my character again? Uh, F focuses on the, the whole character, gets it in in frame, that's what you're looking for. I, I'm, I'm gonna assume that's what, uh, what you're looking for. My render was incredibly laggy. Matt, that is, um, how laggy was your render in Maya? How, how laggy was, were the Arnold renders in there? Because I mean, I mean it, you seem to, wasn't too laggy. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I guess it's, it's using your GPU in here um, to render that out, but it happened, but it happened. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's gonna be slow for everyone. Like my, my renders aren't fast in, in, uh, in either, you know, so uh, it just takes time. That's why uh, towards the end of the semester, I tell you guys to start rendering out your older projects sooner. That way you don't have to render out like thousands of frames and, not finished in time. Uh, actually, I got the notification on Substance about my GPU being outdated, but I ignored. I mean, yeah, like it's just going to be slower, but that's just like a hardware limitation, you know. Like you could update your drivers maybe and see if that helps. Um, but uh, if it's just an old card, then it's an old card, you know, and uh, it's, that's it's the best we got. Uh, but yeah. So continuing on here, but yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I would soften out these normals. You could also harden certain ones, like if you want to keep like a, a hard edge. But I like what you're going with here. Like I like this little robot man, you know. Um, I'd be curious to see what the the high poly looked like too. Uh, there's not much you can do, but ignore it or upgrade. Yeah, right. It's kind of just like a what we what we got to deal with scenario. But yeah, this is super cool. I get like Ultraman vibes from this. Press, press to ignore X. <laughs> but yeah, awesome stuff. Yeah, and this character is great too. Oh, I, in the feedback, I even say that um, uh, we should we should shorten up the arms a little bit because if you stand up and put your arms to your sides, you'll see that your your fingertips kind of go like halfway down the the thigh. But if, if this character brought her arms in, they'd be like almost to her knees. So. Um, Shorten these arms up before you uh, before you uh, rig the character. 
and uh, yeah, you'll be good to go. But make, make sure you shorten the, the elbow joint as well. Like you bring that back in too. So, so they're all proportionately kind of shrink in, you know? But yeah, awesome stuff though. I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing. Uh, I feel like this character's gonna look super sick when they're all painted up. For the, uh, for the dress though, you might have to actually put in some, some bones and, and rig that part as well. Um, I'm willing to help you out uh, with that for sure, because that's, that's kind of like a complex process that, that we don't really go into in class, but, but we can definitely, uh, do that for you. Uh, oh yeah. And then this playful little guy, I like the, uh, I like the, the, oh, you got some, oh yeah. Okay. So it looks like, looks like your graphics card's a little bit, a little bit outdated as well. Um, that's fine. It's just going to get it like a little bit speckly looking you see in here. Uh, but yeah, I like, I like the fur, I like the experimentation with color that you got here. I see that you did a, um, uh, either a stencil or a brush for this one. I think this is a brush that they have in there, but yeah, you can make some like really cool effects on this. I like the playing around. Awesome stuff. And hell yeah, got this, got this, uh, yeah, I, I really like the just proportion on these characters. Like they fit the, the hands and arms are like really well done and stuff. Uh, a lot of really good features of this character. Um, yeah, de definitely get some, uh, I'm, I'm excited to see how this, uh, this, this finishes out because you get some pupils in there, you get the face painted up a little bit, maybe something uh, on, the, on the feet. It's gonna, it's gonna look super sick. Awesome work. You could even go in and put some buttons on the shirt as well, which are little stamps and really sick. I'll soften mine and Maya right now. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you soften, you might be able to bake some maps onto this character. Because I, I remember that your your sculpt was pretty one. Uh, it was pretty solid. Like it was, it was kind of like one shape. Uh, the only problem that you might have is on like the hair and the cape. Um, but I think you might be able to bake everything else out. That might be, that might be sick because then you can get some high poly detail on there. But yeah, definitely um, if, if you, if you want to, hopefully it works on here, but like say for like, because you have those like gold plates on the, on the boots um, on some of those, like you, you can select some of the edges on there and um, harden those edges as well. So mesh display an edge and then it will give it'll give like a really def definitive like line right there you know so it'll make that crease really hard uh same same for this one so mesh display harden edge boom then you have just like that really really clean crisp edge in there but if you if you're able to bake some maps that'd be that'd be super sick too um because i know you, i know your sculpt was had a lot of detail on there um but yeah awesome stuff then we got a little vulpix little shiny vulpix um a little shiny i I, th I can't tell if I, I can't tell what color this is simply because i'm colorblind um but, it's, uh, black. it's supposed to be like, I was thinking of it as like a robot and it's like leaking oil. <laughs> yeah, you should do, uh, yeah, feel free. Oh, also uh, soften out the normals on this one as well and then do that project configuration. Um, but yeah, yeah, that'd be sick. That'd be super sick. I, I like that idea. You could do it at like the seams of like, like wherever they have like some sort of like a seam on there, on there, like where the metal was kind of welded together. That'd be sick too. Um, like it's leaking out of there but yeah nice 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 moss generator is doing the shield i'm seeing some some like nice little wrinkle like not wrinkles but like uh what that's almost like a what is that what is that texture in there it's like <laughs> it's, it's um it's the wow i completely i just forgot the name um carbon fiber carbon fiber yeah 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 absolutely <laughs> a carbon fiber shield you using some new tech on some old uh old viking tech it it's the plastic like shield that they give to you at like the future larp <laughs> the future larp <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah 
But yeah, nice stuff. Yeah, de definitely get some uh, get some more materials on there. Let's see. Try to try to get like a, a a little bit of variance in there as well. That'd be super sick. And then, oh hell yeah, look how this character's turning out. Hell yeah, nice stuff. Nice stuff. I, once you get some uh, some uh, irises and pupils in there, it's gonna really make those eyes look uh, look nice and crisp. But yeah. I, I, I can tell it's like in progress because yeah, like, you know, it's like not that, but like this is gonna be super sick. I, I love how this this is turning out. Awesome stuff. Oh, you do have some variants in there. It was kind of hard to see in those other other screenshots. But wait, what would you say? This fake plastic future future Viking Park. Oh yeah, <laughs> nice stuff. Nice stuff. It's just fun making something I wanted to touch. Matt is Matt just took a screenshot of this instead of the the actual render, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, coming along, coming along for sure. Raphael, he's got this little. Uh, oh, I like the I like the setting for this. It's very atmospheric. He's going on some sort of little mystery adventure. I like this. Yeah, you can see a little bit of texturing on like the cuffs and stuff too. Hell yeah. Awesome stuff. I, I like this. I like this a lot. Hell yeah. This is so on. Yeah, right? Like, <laughs> it's got like, oh man. And we got the background in this one. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Good stuff. And Rodney, he's got this character going on. Rodney, I feel like you could, you could bake out some maps with the uh with, with your your character because they're they're kind of like one shell the hair might be the only thing that gives us issues with like detail getting getting overshadowed but yeah get, you, you should give um baking out some maps a try because i think you might be able to pull what it do you off. what do you mean by like baking out some maps uh that thing that i was talking about uh last class a bunch where i was going into the texture set settings and then um where is it bake mesh maps it's also under edit oh bake right mesh maps because if you can get your high poly detail from zbrush on there that'd be super sick that'd be oh, super that'd be cool. sick yeah but yeah it's, it's coming along nice and hopefully i did this right yep yeah, looks perfect yeah like look at the improvement guys so this is um this is like the the version with softened normals and then if we scroll up do, 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 do. the version with hard normals right like the, the soft normals are like much more believable like they it looks like it, it's the actual form i do like the faceted sort of hard normal look on some things um but yeah but yeah look at this super sick super sick why are they called normals i have no idea i'm gonna be honest i have no idea they're just the, that's just what they're that's their their id's name like they're, like that's why you have normals and you have normal maps because they both achieve the same thing they're just redirecting light and they're basically like a yeah they're just i have no idea why they're called normals why are they called why are normals normals let's find out oh it's some math shit it's some math shit for sure that's the that's the reason um hey mike i have a quick question yeah what's up um i'm trying to export my smoothed out full pic and the option to export as the um i think it's fxd uh isn't there anymore and i don't know what it, i haven't changed anything. oh 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 okay yeah 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 so you um to export as an fbx it uh you have to have a plugin loaded so if you go to windows up here and then mm -hmm. settings and preferences, and then plugin manager. So pop this window open. Yeah, I've got that. And then you're looking for FBX. I think you could just search in this top bar, FBX. And boom, there you go. You're looking for FBX Maya dot uh, MLL or dot bundle. It might be dot bundle on yours if you're on a Mac. Mm -hmm. I got it, thank you. There you go. And then you should see that that option when you do file export selection, it'll just be in the drag down somewhere. 
will be right next to OBJ export. But yeah. Sorry, lol. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now you got me looking at like math shit. I'm like, why are they called models? Um, but yeah, they're just uh, they're just like a vector three that stores lighting information. That's that's all you that's all you need to worry about. And then like the RGB channels, that's what we use to to tell, or we don't really. That's how that's how the maps get baked out in uh, substance. But yeah, oh yeah, look at these. Look at these with those softened normals now. Whoa. Frick. Yeah, I like the, the going through on, on uh, all these pockets and stuff and kind of outlining this. Yeah, you could if you could bake the, the high poly detail onto this, that'd be super sick too. That'd be super sick. I used soften. I used soften slash hard. Yeah, yeah, a little mix of them to kind of give different, different shapes a little bit of a, a, a more of an outline. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I like it. I even I think he works really well in this like desert background too. It looks like he's I don't know trekking through that with his robotic skills. But yeah, this is super sick. But yeah, like my god, guys, like there's a lot of really cool characters in this class. I'm very proud of you guys. This is some like this is some impressive work that we got going on. But yeah, good stuff, my dudes. Good stuff. I'm gonna see if my tea is scaldingly hot still. A little bit, a little bit scalding, just a mild scald. But with that, my friends, we are ready to, or not, not all of us, but like I, I, I I'm just gonna do this for prosperity, so you guys can see this when uh, we have to bring our our textures into Maya later, right? So we have uh, basically our, our, you can see our UVs over here for my character. Um, and we have our base color, we have our height. I didn't use much height, <laughs> pretty much only for the nips right here. Um, roughness and italic and normal. Um, and normal is going to bake out with that height, so so don't worry about having these be separate. But uh, but yeah, so if we go over to file and then export textures, this is going to be how we get all this substance detail back into Maya now. Um, so you go to file, export textures, and um, my preset is to Unity because. I'm working in a game engine, but we can go to, I still want to experiment around with Arnold AI standard because that's like where we're going with it, but we can just do uh, PBR metallic roughness. Um, let's see if there's, yeah, yeah. So PBR metallic roughness. And uh, if we have size 1024, let me make sure this output template is what we're looking for. PBR metallic roughness, roughness. Base color, metallic, normal, nice. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, you can you can go into like a, a higher texture size if you want, if your computer can handle it. Uh, I'm just gonna keep this guy at a cheeky 1024. Nice song. Um, and that's that's the pixels of the actual image, the texture image that it's gonna output. Just so you know, in case you're wondering what that is. Um, and I'm gonna change this output directory. So. Don't mess things up for my game. I'm just gonna do this into my class folder, art 426. Uh, and I'm gonna go into my source images. Um, let me go over, because I, I, I've been over setting up the project folder a while ago, but there's a good chance that some people didn't get to do that. So everyone open up Maya if you don't have Maya open currently. Um, because I want to make sure that we set up our, our project folders. Um, now, project folders are basically a hierarchy of every asset in your scene. Every, every single character rig, every single uh, texture, 
every sound, every rendered image, um, they're going to sit there. So I'll show you guys how to do that. I'm just going to give you guys a little bit of time to pop open Maya. Um, but yeah, and the reason that's important is because if we, if you have some sort of situation where your computer can't render well enough, then you're going to need to send that to the on-campus renderer. And then uh, it, our, our lab tech, Anna, there will, will be like importing your entire project folder and then rendering that out. Uh, and then she's going to give you the the rendered images back, and then you can just compile those. But that's only that's only for people that like can't render at their house because we can't have all all like twenty of you sending your your scenes over to Anna, and then she's just like, I want to die. <laughs> like, <laughs> like that would be um, that'd be bad. So let's make sure that we reserve that only for people that need it. But also, it's good to just kind of establish this workflow in general. Um, I did, I did mention it and go over at the start of the semester. That's why we have this project folder for me myself already. But um, to do a project, uh, to to make a new project folder, I've got to go to File, Project Window, and then uh, I just made my like my this is my current project right here. Uh, you you click New if you haven't already made one for the class. But yeah, it has all these different folders for your different assets in the scene. Uh, scenes, that's just like your 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 mesh folder, you know, your your animation folder. Like that, that's gonna be where you put all of your, your scenes that you save out the dot MBs of in my um, images, that's gonna be where the renders automatically go when you're as you're rendering with Arnold, it's just gonna keep spitting them out into that folder. Source images, that's where we put our textures. That's why I'm talking about it right now, because we're about to put textures from substance into our source images folder. Um, and then I believe, I don't know what Clips is exactly, but um, sound, that's your like, little sound bites, like if you're doing a lip sync. Um, movies, that's, that's where your play blasts go, I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, 90% 90 90 of the time you're gonna be messing around with scenes, uh, in source images, sound, and regular images. Uh, but yeah, so you'd accept that, um and then you'll have a new project folder somewhere on your computer so you can see mine is under desktop course content or course materials and then art 426 spring 2021 and yeah you can see that it has that same hierarchy that i was just talking about all those and we go up scenes and you can see that i have a lot of different mbs dot mas uh fbx's uh, we got a single Aspen in there for for you, you Aspen enthusiasts. I still don't know why they chose that as a suffix for a, a file, but uh, but yeah, <laughs> all caps. But yeah, so everyone, make sure that you do that. Um, next step is because you probably still have your your character open. Um, you should definitely file save scene as. And then it will uh, it'll automatically put you into that into that project folder that you just created. So mine didn't because I've been saving. I've been working between two courses and my my home stuff, so I'm kind of all over the place on projects. But it should automatically put you into this directory. So right here. So it's it would automatically put you into your. Uh, your project folder into the scenes folder whenever you try to save your Maya scene. So make sure you, you save a copy like that. So I'm going to save blacksmith mesh dot MB. There we go. Perfect. Exactly what I'm looking for. Hell yeah. And then I'll just give you guys like a little, a minute or two to do that. before exporting stuff from Substance. Are we exporting the shield out of Substance? Um, no, we're, we're only exporting the textures for it because you, you should have the shield somewhere on there. Um, you, you can feel, if you're like not confident that you have the file in like a, uh, 
can you rig the shield with an evil skeleton? <laughs> uh, potentially, but that's some nightmare fuel. That's definitely, uh, also the topology is not meant for, for it to be animated that way. So you'll get a lot of like folding from the middle. Um, but you know, feel free to try. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you could, I, I believe it does have a export mesh. Yeah, so you could export the mesh directly into that project folder that you make, uh, if, if that, if you like that more. Um, shield's gonna start chomping people. Yeah, it's gonna start looking like uh, Sarah's shield at the end of it. <laughs> it's already shielded with people skeleton. I think a little folding won't hurt. True, true. Um, but yeah. All right, so I'm gonna assume everyone's had, everyone has a project folder. So next step, yeah, we're gonna go back to substance and we're gonna go to that export textures button again. Um, and then we're gonna do, uh, yeah, our, our shader in there. Go up to PBR metallic roughness in here, the default right there. Whatever size you add, the higher you go, the more detail it's gonna get. Um, but I, I'm gonna keep mine at 1024. And then you should be good to export. Um, well, we first also set the destination folder. <laughs> Freaking Mike, come on. Don't forget about that. So let's go to, I'm going to that desktop folder, course materials. And then, yeah, I'm navigating back to that, that project folder right there. And I'm, I'm looking for source images, this one. That's where we're getting those, those textures in there. So I'm selecting that folder. And you can see that it pops up in that tab. And then we're going to export. It's going to do some thinking. Six textures selected for export, and it has them. Um, and let's go to, let's hop back over to Maya now. And now in Maya, I need to basically apply all those textures to this character. And if you remember, we do that through materials, right? Because in materials, you can have those channels that's like the the albedo color, uh, you can have the roughness, you can have the metal, and that's like what we've been doing in substance, right? So if we just, on those slots where you have usually just a slider for like one flat color for everything, uh, if you put the texture into that slot, it's going to color that model with the texture. So let's, let's do that now. So I'm going to right click the model. I'm going to assign a new material. And I'm going to go to Arnold. Arnold Standard Surface, or AI Standard Surface. That's the most basic Arnold shader right there. Again, this is not super necessary right now because we can, uh, we can always assign a material and textures later um, after it's rigged. Just make sure that your UVs are done though, uh, if you do something like that. Um, and then uh, if you hold right click and go to Material Attributes, you can see that it has a bunch of different um, a bunch of different maps, right? Like you can put a map into any of these, anywhere, anywhere, any place where there's a checkerboard box right there, you could put a, a an image in there and color it with something. But uh, the ones we're basically worried about are color, metalness, and specular roughness right here. So uh, at the top, you have a weight that controls all of these different channels. So uh, if you drag this all the way to zero, you're gonna have no, none of this color channel coming through. So we want this to be at a hundred, right? And then for the color, you have to look, hook this up to a file and then navigate to the folder and source images, AI, let's see, this is looking right. So this is base color. We just hook it up in there and that one's good to go. You'll see that my character didn't really get colored though. That's because I'm on five mode for just sh regular shaded display. But if you press six, you're gonna start getting that color in there. Boom. You're gonna start getting that color. And I know, I know one of y'all is gonna have that question for sure, because it's a classic. You can be like, 
why did my why did my texture not show up like i put it in the proper field it's like on it should be on the character it's probably because you're in five mode right there right remember you have four mode for wireframe you have five mode for shaded you have six for textures seven that's for lighting so if you have lighting in the scene it's like here point light You can get like a, a really cheap, trashy pl uh, preview of what what your lighting looks like in the scene. Um, but normally, you'd go through Arnold and set up your lights in there and have it in mind for when you render stuff. But uh, but yeah, so five shaded, six textured. So let's go back to the material attributes. So again, I just select the object, hold right click, go to material attributes, and we have a metalness wrap, metalness map, right? So let's click that checkerboard. Let's go to File. And let's go to that metallic.png. So open that up. Boom, bang. That's slapped in there now. And then let's go back to that material attributes. And roughness. Remember, we were, we were making some roughness maps. So let's go click on that. Click on File, because we're going to forward it to a file. And image name roughness right here boom perfect and then uh it doesn't look like it right now uh but we also have to uh because my, my character doesn't have a lot of normal maps on them uh but you can go down to your geometry bump mapping and then file uh mine might not work because i'm i export for open gl rather than um, rather than the uh, what is it direct X, so it might be it might be a little bit flipped around, um, but yeah, that's fine. So let me go to raw on that on that color space. Um, make sure you do that for all of your maps that aren't um, that aren't the color. So for that metalness, make sure that color space is raw. Um, the roughness, make sure that color space is raw as well. And if we want to really change things up, there's one last detail. Uh, rendering editor, hyper shade. So if you go up to Windows, rendering editors, hyper shade, and then go to your um, AI standard surface shader that we made. And you click this little double triangle in the box button, you'll see every single node. And this is Again, another node-based thing like Substance Designer, um, but it's a it, it's Maya's version. So uh, you can go in here, and what we need to do is not mess with the base color. We're looking for metallic. Uh, usually, I like to just plug in like red for the metallic map right there, and for roughness, I like to do the same thing: red on the roughness. Oh, whoops, sorry about that. Red. Let's check the roughness right there. Sorry, I plugged it into the wrong slot. Um, also, uh, you can always put your alpha as luminance, or alpha is luminance right here on those, on those two, on those two grayscale maps. Um, and then yeah, you're, you should be good to go. Uh, and this will render out in Arnold once you get some lights set up, and you'll be good to go. Uh, let's see. Let's let's double check. It might again. My normal map might be inverted, but um, but it, it won't be for you guys because I sp specifically showed how to not do that. So let's get some let's get some lights in the scene, and then I'm going to render out this character. See if it is looking correct. And let's remember every time that you make a, a light, you have to crank up exposure. I always go up to ten because the default exposure is just not enough. And yeah, you, you can see it. You can see it happen. So let me, let me zoom in on the character a little bit. There we go. And then let's crank up that intensity. Yeah. There we go. It's a little bit dark, but, um, but yeah, you can see that I'm, I'm getting that that metallic look of everything. I'm getting that shine across it, you know, and all, all my uh, 
all of my uh, maps transferred over nicely. So yeah, just follow those steps. Um, I have a shorter version of that video, I believe, on on uh, on Beachboard. I think I think it's linked on there. If not, I'll I'll, I'll, get, I'll get it to you guys. Um, but you guys can also just watch this this lecture over again. But yeah, so that's just forwarding those textures. I don't expect you guys to do that right now because like we're still in progress texturing. Textures do next week, so um, no reason to just really apply them right now. But yeah. But there's that information for for when the time comes. So it's definitely like a button clicky thing. You'll definitely have to just do the same thing that I did, just kind of follow it one to one. But uh, but yeah, you'll you'll get there. You'll get there. The um, next step though is we're gonna step into rigging. We're gonna do a little bit of rigging. So everyone that wants to rig their character, make sure you have your characters back in Maya. And we're going to go, let's go on like a small break to set this up because this next lecture is like, it's, it gets intense. It, it, it'll, it'll, be, uh, it'll be annoying. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. It's going to be annoying. But, um, but yeah, get some, get some snacks, get some, get some drinks, stay hydrated. Get that brain ready, y'all. And like I said, this this is the hardest lecture of the class. So uh, be be kind to yourself. Uh, I think I've distilled it down to the most crucial steps. But yeah, but yeah, it's still it, it's still kind of a hard concept to grasp. For the one in Maya, uh, do you want to see it's both low and high poly, or do we just no, use... only low? Oh, okay, okay, only low. So you're saying it's all downhill after this? No, I'm sa I'm saying that we have a it's like a roller coaster. So it's gonna be downhill for a little bit, and then when you're animating, whew, oh, it's flying up again. It's just it's cruising up, and then when you're rendering, you're on top of the world. You know, you're just finishing up the class. And, Mike, yeah. you really know how to uh, sell a part of the pipeline. <laughs> I'm I'm just preparing people mentally. <laughs> I'm preparing yeah. people mentally for it, you know? Yeah, you're like, um, yeah, rend <laughs> freaking it sucks. It, but then uh, after you're done with it. It's a lot better. <laughs> See, I, I I enjoy it because I know but that, that it, it gives me the ability to move my character right. So it's like a necessary evil for me. But I understand that I get I don't know I get complaints about it all the time from students. I'm like, I'm sorry, it's, it's you can't get around it though. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's it's a thing, right? Like, I'm sure a lot of people feel the same way. But if you take to it, it is a specific job, and it's a very stable one because they always oh. need triggers. Yeah, let me let yeah. me. Yeah, Sarah brings up a very good point. Um, I said that rigging is the most difficult part of the pipeline. Um, it also pays the most because it's the hardest. Like mm -hmm. technical artists, like they do like code and stuff too. Like, you know, we, we've done like, we've opened up the script editor just like once or twice maybe, but like they like write tools in this script editor and then you can do amazing stuff with it. So yeah, don't get me wrong. It's, it's an important and like crucial part of the pipeline. Yeah, uh, it's for the people who like the problem solving aspect and who are a little bit of a bit of both worlds, right? Both artists and engineers. So mm -hmm. don't completely discredit it as something as like a, a slog it, it will be a slog for some of you for sure yeah. Yeah. um but if you really take to it know that this is actually a very viable stable field and oh, yeah. one of the benefits that because uh, i'm coming from the compositor inside which is also not as sexy or exciting and we do have to do with um, scripting <laughs> but um you know what one of the benefits is that if you do go into the industry for this you can save your creative energies for yourself for other things uh, oh, for sure. No. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm being 100% serious because it's an industry, right? Like when you are working on stuff, things have deadlines and you are tasked with one job. This, this is, this is like something that's kind of fun, but also in a sense, a, a little unrealistic because you guys are doing all, all of the, you're putting your hands in all the pies. You're, oh, yeah. um, and that's why, you know, indie game devs, the developers have my ultimate respect because they also all are doing all the pies. Like they're doing everything. Yeah. Um, and bakery has, <laughs> many health code violations at this point <laughs> exactly yeah we're uh this is a pre pre-pandemic times bakery <laughs> just touching <laughs> yeah. everything but yeah so that's why college is so great and this class is so great because you get to touch everything <laughs> in the, in the fullest sense of the word but once you uh 
get out and I, I, I hate to say the real world because you guys are experiencing the real world now. But once you get into more into like the workflow and the pipeline and stuff, you start to realize very quickly that you are only doing one aspect of it. So it's very good for you to focus and hone in on the stuff that interests you so that you could dive deeper into it because he's just giving you the appetizer course for now. Oh, so yeah, yeah this is um, the sampler guys like mm -hmm. I, I said at the beginning so it's got to be the, the sampler platter for all of y'all because like i for instance i only did animation when i was working in the studio mm -hmm. like that's i just went in they're like michael here's your rigged character textured modeled for you not for me specifically you know but and then uh, you move it around and i was like okay i'm very fine with this so yeah if if Thank anything this in this, meal <laughs> right like this is a, yeah. it's a big meal you know uh, yeah. but uh but yeah so if, if you like really latch onto anything in this class like then you can pursue it you know yeah and it uh, it does really make a difference when you have things in your portfolio that you're genuinely interested in and it shows in your work as well so um take it as an opportunity to just this is just the appetizer course and then if you're really like digging into it then you dig deeper so but also brace yourself because rigging, rigging is very really difficult. <laughs> yeah, rigging, rigging is difficult. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. just uh, get into it. But if you already know coding, then it might not be. So there you go. Well, we're, we're going to use an auto rig. So most of the ah, okay. uh, most of the technical stuff is kind of done for us. Uh, but but we're uh, still skinning the the bones to the to the meshes. Like, uh, do you know what like scripting uh, language Maya is? This, are we rigging Maya? Is that what it is? Or? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's either my, Mel or Python. Mel is like okay. uh, Maya extended language, I think, and it's like Maya's own like code. Specialized. Language. Damn it. Okay. Kinda, this thing's got wack. its own language. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but Python is a little bit more common and universal. So that's what oh, I was hoping. Yeah. yeah, I've heard of that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A lot of people, yeah, use Python. That's like, that's like, if you're if you're coding in Maya, you might as well try Python because like, it's just going to be more applicable to things outside of Maya as well. Mm -hmm. I was like, who's Mel? <laughs> who's, who's Mel? Who's Mel? <laughs> <laughs> Who is she? I haven't heard of her. I like when it's called Python. Yeah. yeah right. Python's sounds, been around for a while. It's dangerous. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, Python's cool. Hey, Mike. What's up? I'm sorry, but can you go over um, exporting to Maya again? Because Maya was trying to load up while you were going over it. So I, I mean, hear you. I'll, I'll go over it, but like I said, I don't expect you guys to do it right now because like textures are due next week. Um, but yeah. Um, everyone else, uh, you, you can just take like take 15 off and, and prep your mind prep your mind guys but yeah so Great, i'm gonna go lie down yep go for it i'm gonna go uh, order food do it so up at file export textures and then navigate to that uh to that source images folder um remember if you don't have that then go to file and then project window and make a new project for, for Maya. Um, and then what you're gonna be doing is exporting those images to the source images folder right here. Right there. And so here, once you get that folder set up, you can just click this and navigate to that folder. See, this is the project folder on my end, you know? Um, and then you're gonna go into source images. Select that folder. And the last detail is you can click the output template and then PBR metallic roughness. Do that one. And then you, you're, you're good to just click export and you should be done. Uh, for rigging, did you say that you have a character to use? Uh, yes, it's not a full character though. It's just only an arm because if you're not gonna be animating like the character, then there's no reason for me to give you like a full character to do. So um, basically how the shield was the alternate for the texturing assignment, the arm is the alternate for the rigging assignment. So, so yeah, it's a lot more simplified. You, I've already made the, the, the bones for that one. Um, it's just gonna be a, a matter of you skinning the mesh to that and getting the, the, the painted weights working properly. Um, but yeah, so that's what we're gonna be going over. Now I need T. Hell yeah. All right. Let's say B back at 525. 
Oh yeah. Popcorn. But yeah, so you're probably wondering like what the concept of rigging really is. So let me let me just show you a few of, of mine for for my game. And in the wrong folder completely. Let's see, Unity. Sounds art characters NPCs. Dude, let's open up Grandma's rig. Grandma rig. Well, don't save. But yeah, so okay. Well, once we get out of this mess of outliners and closing that cursed quick rig folder, um, yeah. So this is a rig right here. It's, it has our mesh, right? But then if we look under the skin, so I'm going to go into four mode, you'll see joints. These little guys are joints. And let me, um, let me crank up the, uh, the display of those joints. Where is it? Animation, uh, joint size. Let's crank this up to something bigger. There we go. Joints, yeah. Joints, sorry. Um, the now the joints are basically think of them as bones in your skeleton. Like uh, when we're doing stuff in three D, we're we're kind of rigging it very similarly to how our body is rigged up, right? And uh, like think of the rig as sort of the armature that you move the character around with, right? Like we're only able to like pivot our our bodies around, like our shoulders and stuff, because of our muscles and our joints in there, our skeletal bones. So that's what, that's what lets us move this around. It's also similar to like uh, stop motion characters, how they have that um, sort of metal armature underneath. And then you have the, the silicone on top. The silicone in our case is just a, a mesh, a textured mesh. And then underneath that, you have those joints. You can see that I have one. It does, it's not exactly one-to-one -one with a human though, right? Like think about your spine. You have like so many joints in there. And here I only have uh, only have three. It's all a grandma needs to get around. Um, only three joints in there. Uh, and then you have my my arms, and they go to the, the wrist. And you can see that they, there's a, a joint for each of the digits of the fingers. That's a, that's what we need to do. We need to get all those in there. Um, now. My, my, my rigs are a little bit more advanced, like I needed to somehow fight. So say, this is why I warn against clothing, because clothing can be pretty difficult to, to manage with, with joints. But like, yeah, look at that belt. That's kind of around grandma's waist or uh, around the torso. Um, it gets stretched out, right? And that's why we need we need some controls over this to sort of mitigate that stretching and animation. Um, if you look at like, if you get a rig for like uh, some sort of animated feature, I'll, I'll oftentimes you'll have clothing, uh, like think about like big shoulder pads, you'll have a, like some joints and controls for that, right? Um, but that, that, that brings me to the sort of setup for these joints, right? So we have our mesh, which is what we need to move around, right? The only way we can move this mesh around is by binding it to these skeletal joints, right? And then something very key, very key. I'm going, I, I, want, to, I want to be very clear about this. When we use our auto rig to create these joints, don't delete them and don't delete any of the rig itself. Now what you're, it might be wondering is like, we were just talking about the rig. That's like the skeleton, right? And that's true, that's true. But also on, that comes with the rig are these little NURB curves. Um, let, me, let me rotate grandma so it's easier to see. Um, it's basically these pieces that I'm selecting, right? That I'm actually rotating and moving around. Like this neon, I think it's green or it might be yellow. I don't know. Again, color one, uh, I can't really tell. But uh, it's like this, this control right here, that's, part of the rig that's part of the rig that's the that's the the part that the animator actually touches so the animator goes in and messes around with this this is what i move around professionally on a day to day, -to -day basis you know uh messing around with this stuff uh so we don't really once the joints are set in there 
we don't really touch them. We don't really touch them. It's green. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. So we, yeah, it's this green stuff. It's also this, this, uh, these blue ones, these IK controls for the arms. It's also those. Uh, it's also these red ones. These are all parts of the rig, you know, all parts of the rig. And uh, unfortunately, uh, face rigs are out of the scope of the class, but you can see that I have joints in here as well. Mine's very basic, very basic. You only have a few in there. Um, but the mouth, when the little jaw control opens, so does the mouth. And yeah, there's some other, there's some other like little higher, higher complexity things that I'm doing to, to sort of create this effect for the for the mouth opening but you know uh we don't need to worry about that unless you're you're trying to get into rigging um but yeah so this is this is kind of like the the method behind the madness that is rigging and now remember that i the, these the skeleton kind of exists on its own and these nerves these nerves curves right here they tell those joints exactly where to move. So see how they're kind of one-to-one -one matched with this. So when I move these, those curves around, um, it moves those, uh, those joints. What is a NURB? A NURB is like kind of a more primordial way of doing CG. Um, so if you go up to your create, don't, don't do this with me, but create primitives. You can create like a, a sphere. And a NURB object is, uh, is described with curves rather than actual polygons. That's the difference. So it's, it's using a bunch of different curves in there to describe that surface rather than a bunch of just like quads and stuff that you, that you make in there. Uh, this is what like uh, early Pixar was made with. Early Pixar uses, uh, used NURBs for their, for their characters, I believe. But uh, I believe they're on polys nowadays because um, polys kind of displaced nerves uh, in the industry. And uh, but yeah, so that's what's going on there. Is anyone unclear on um, what the skeleton is versus what the uh, the rig itself is? Those controllers versus the mesh. Anyone unclear on that? I, I'm more than happy to go over that. Clear some things up. I wouldn't mind hearing about it one more time just yeah. to get drilled in. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll, I'll kind of mix up how I describe it too. Um, so think about like a puppeteer, right? Like you have your marionette and you have your strings that pull each limb around. Our strings in this case are these, uh, these controllers right here. Let me turn off my joints just so you guys don't get distracted by them at all. I'm just gonna go to my show menu and turn off joints, boom. So we don't have to see those joints anymore. So we're the, um, we're the puppeteer, this is the marionette. Um, and we're able to use just our regular move, uh, rotate and scale, uh, not scale as much, not scale as commonly, but mostly just move and rotate tools to sort of place each different part of this puppet, right? Like these are the strings that are kind of pulling it around and each of these, each of these NURBS curves in here is controlling a different joint in the skeleton, right? It's just telling that skeleton where to move around. So let me turn off polygons. Where is it? There we go. And then let me turn back on joints. There we go. So this is basically the, the relationship, right? Like this, this finger joint is moving, or this finger control is moving that hierarchy of joints around, right? This one is moving the wrist around. It's an IK, so we, it's, we can kind of just move that and rotate it into place. Uh, this one's FK, this arm, um, and you can switch between at any time but just so you know, and this one's only rotating. So like as I'm rotating and moving around these, these different nerves curves, they're moving the joints underneath, right? 
So that's how that connection is working. Um, and then let me turn off. Let me turn off joints. Let me turn on polygons. There we go. But yeah, so so then when these when these nerves curves are driving that joint structure around, what that joint structure is driving is the mesh, because we bind that joint hierarchy to the mesh. I can show this in a little bit of a primordial way, nothing crazy. But I'm going to go create a cube. Don't do this with me. It's just, it's just for demonstration purposes. Um, let's just make a nice, nice snake. Sorry, I have some snapping going on. There we go. Let's just drag this out. And then uh, multi-cut this quite a few times. There we go. In object mode, I'm going to go into mesh and smooth that boy down. So now we have a nice sausage character. Um, it's looking pretty nice. But say we want to rig this boy up. What we got to do is, because we, we just have our meshes, right? And this is going from the ground up. We're going to use an auto rig to do a lot of this. Um, but this is kind of just bare bones way to kind of show you what's going on. But let's go into skeleton. And then what we do is we go into a side view with space bar. And we won't have to do this part because we're going to have an auto rig do this. And then we just draw out our joints along the character, right? So if this was a full character, I'd do the spine first, and then I'd do the legs off of this. And what we have now is a, wait, where did those joints go? One second. Why are they, why are they different? Oh, it's because I turn off joints in this view. Don't worry about that. There we go. So now we have all these joints here. Very nice, very nice. And you can see that I, as I rotate them, if I select, if I select all of these bad boys in here. It also helps to use the outliner when you're when you're rigging, because you can really rapidly sort of select all this stuff. Um, and then once I, if I start rotating this, you see how that's that's kind of coming to life, because they're just like a child sort of hierarchy right here. Like joint five is a child of joint four. Joint six is a child of joint five, joint seven, child joint six. Um, and as I move these around, the next ones in that chain move around too. So that's what's happening in the spine, right? That's what's happening in the spine up to the arms, up to everything, up to the face even. Um, what's the difference between IK and FK? I'll, I'll go into that when we start actually animating stuff. Um, but yeah, it's just two different ways to pose the character. Um, but yeah, um, so we have all these joints in here now, right? And as as these uh, as this joint eight moves, and the, the the ones after it move as well, uh, and it's just a big you know just a big party of joints in there. But we have, like I said before, like we don't we we shouldn't be moving around our our characters with the joints alone. You technically could, but it's not going to be cohesive. It's gonna the animator is going to want to die. Um, so what we need is a control rig on this, right? So we have the skeletal structure, but we need a control rig in here. So what the control rig is, is just a bunch of nerves, right? So if I go to create nerves circle, boom, right here. And then if I rotate this into space and move it over here and scale it up, you can see how that's kind of kind of start to resemble a rig, like a, one of our, one of the rigs on like the character, you know? Um, yeah, so there you go, that's in place. And basically what you have is your joint structure and then you have your, uh, your nerves structure over here as well. And th these ones will drive the joints eventually. Um, one problem right now that I have though, is that this has a bunch of values on it. Ugh, disgusting values in here. Uh, what you want on your controls is to have them pretty much zeroed out in their default position. Again, we don't have to worry about this because the auto rig does this for us. Uh, let me turn off joints real quick. So like you, you can see that when I set certain these values to zero, they go to back to their, their default position, right? 
the way that they do that is that they get it into position. They have a group under this, right? So they'll have a group under your control right here. And let me, let me zero out my position stuff here. You'll have that empty group underneath everything. Let me turn back on joints so I can see it. And this is just kind of more in depth, y'all. So we're not gonna be expected to do much of this. Um, we call this like uh, control one group right there. And then uh, you just duplicate that, boom, move that over to the next joint, line it up, boom, duplicate that, move to the over the next joint, boom, joint, boom, joint, boom, joint, boom, joint, and joint right there. So now you have a bunch of these, right? And this is when you need to start parenting these into these other groups, right? So this group needs to be a child of this control. So then you just middle click, drag that into there. Boom, you can see that it's now a child of that. So when I move this one, right there, it's moving that last one. So this is exactly how we're gonna drive all of our different bones. And let me just do these automatically. This is gonna be how we start doing that. See how I'm basically making that same hierarchy for, oops, I messed something up, I believe. There we go. We're making this same hierarchy for everything else. So now we have group two, group three, group four, group five, group six, seven. Um, and let's get this into that original group, OG group right there. So now you have just all of these, right? All these different controls lined up right on top of those other joints. Um, and, but when we, when we move these controls around, like it's not moving the, it's not moving the joints yet, right? What the hell, okay. So what we need to do is constrain those. Again, this is just for, for your concepts sake. Uh, our auto rig does all this for us. So um, you have to go into rigging, constraint, parent constraint right there. Do the same for this. You do um, driver and then driven. Our circle is the driver. The driven is the joint. So we do got to do that. Constraint, parent, and driver. And, uh, driver and driven. I'm just going to do my repeat key, which is G, to just go do all of these at once. Really speed up the process there. Boom. So now, move these. Ah, the joints follow them one to one. Ooh, spicy. Spicy. Now that's some power, my friends. But then you're like, Mike, the mesh isn't moving yet. And you're damn right. You're damn right. So now what we need to do is select all of our joints or just select the base and then the mesh. Yeah, let's just do that. Then we're gonna go up to skin. We're gonna do bind skin. Let's go to the options though. Joint hierarchy. This part we will do as a class. This part we will do because we need to bind our, our skeleton that gets generated to our mesh. We'll do joint hierarchy. Uh, we're gonna do the bind method of geodesic voxel. Hell yeah. Uh, it's just a bunch of math stuff. Don't worry about it. Um, and max influences, that looks fine. Looks fine, yeah, yeah, just joint hierarchy. And then bind skin, boom. So now, select all these. Yeah, we have the sausage that's come to life. One lively sausage now. And you can animate it. I'm such a fan of the wiggle on this rig. <laughs> Hell yeah. So that's our, that's our control rig right there. And it's driving these joints, which is driving that mesh. So it's a little bit, a little bit of a two-stepper process, right? You got the controls that drive the joints, that drives the mesh. It's guarding two days ago and a lot of earthworms are doing the same thing. <laughs> Hell yeah. And then the last part of the process, guys, is animation. So if I just, you know, set some keys on this bad boy.
then press play. Oops, press play. Hell yeah. There we go. Where is auto rig? <laughs> uh, I'm sure many, many an animator have uh, asked themselves that. Uh, we're not going to be using Maya's built in one. Um, it's more step, the step-by-step the -step version of it, it's all right, but you don't get fingers with it. So we're going to use a different auto rig that you, that you can actually get fingers with. Um, but yeah, so I'll, I'll show that in a second. But yeah, so does that make sense, y'all? That whole, that, how like the, the relationship between them. So like you have the, the nerve curves, you have that hierarchy that drives the joint hierarchy, and then that hierarchy drives the mesh. We're, we're primarily going to be focusing on the the whole mesh skinning part of it but yeah let me know let me know if uh if y'all want to hear any more about that your character is flailing for its life <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely uh, about to be eaten by a bird or something yes in there but yeah i like that i like that the bones are gay what does that mean? <laughs> I think of it as one of those wooden stones. Rainbow. Oh, is it rainbow? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you're right. I just looked at these like first these first four like look the same to me. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm seeing some blues over here though. Oh yeah. Uh, I think of one of those wooden stones. Yeah, yeah. The the little like uh the old school like wooden ones that you just turn to the side and it would kind of go around. Yeah, they're all seven colors of the rainbow. Damn. Damn. Yeah, my eyes are garbage. <laughs> I cannot see that stuff. That's funny. Hell yeah. All right. Well, I'm not hearing any any complaints or uh, any questions. Can you run it? They run through it from the beginning again. Um, I'm not going to do it for the sausage because that takes a little bit longer. But I just want it. Just think of it like this. Got this NURB control, right? And our, our rig is gonna create this for us. And that drives this joint. Like, so if I move this joint around, you can see that it's moving the character around as well. And, uh, <laughs> and um, uh, so it, each of these joints is bound to that mesh, right? See, I'm moving that joint around and it's moving the mesh again. I want to be very clear about this. Don't move the joint directly after you make the rig. Don't do that. That's going to break the rig. If I if I like key this, the rig could break from that. Uh, you'd have to like delete out those keys, and then uh, hopefully it would it would it'd be fixed from there. But yeah, don't mess with the joints after you make them. Don't mess with the the controls after you make them. If I if I go in and delete this, look at that. Ground doesn't have a spine control now, and she's doing some weird shit. So let's not do that. That's not good. Don't do that. It's gonna. Uh, all the joints are like in these auto rigs. All those joints have a specific purpose, and so if you mess up with that hierarchy, then like connections get lost. Uh, in fact, I don't even trust deleting and then like undoing to fix it. I don't trust that, you know. So I would, I would, I would reload the file if I deleted a control and accident. Um, but yeah, so basically, you have NURB control drives the joints joints drive the mesh that's 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 the basics of it veronica that, that's that's all we need to know um for this class does that does that make sense yeah i was just wondering of how you exactly like i i might have missed it because i was picking up my niece from her soccer practice but um it's just how do you get the rig to show and, and after you in, or i think you op just opened the uv map uh, no, I didn't open up the UV map. I, I used a, a whole new tool entirely. Oh. I, I, again, I, did, I didn't talk about this yet because like we haven't actually done the the lecture. I'm just doing the the sort of concepts. But like, oh, okay. if you were to go in and rig a character yourself, you first go to the rigging menu, right? We've been in modeling this entire time. My God, guys, we've been stuck in modeling land for for years at this point. Uh, but now we're moving on. We're upgrading to rigging right here. Boom, and then it gives you a bunch of different gives you a bunch of different tools right like here's we used to have our, our mesh all of our mesh tools but now if you go to rigging boom you got a bunch of your rigging tools in here right um 
And yeah, the, the, the one that I did to make the, the, uh, the joints for the worm was, oh, whoops, sorry, there, there you go. Let's delete this, nice noise. And there we go. Uh, the one I used for this one was uh, skeleton create joints. And I went in from like a, a planar view to get a bit more precise, but I just, boom, put a bunch of joints in there. Boom, got that hierarchy. Then I created a bunch of these NURBS controllers and they all have a fake group under them. And they're all one after another in this hierarchy, you know? So uh, if I move any of these earlier uh, nodes in this outliner, it's gonna move all the other ones, right? Because these are child objects. And basically you just do that and then have these joints, I mean, these controls bound to this uh, joint structure right here. Uh, let me just delete this one out. Um, first, I'm going to delete all by type history, and that's going to delete all of my skinning history. It deleted grandma's too, unfortunately, but we don't need grandma anymore. Fuck off, grandma. No one, <laughs> no one's, no one's going to be animating you anymore. <laughs> uh, and then the last step was uh, constraining, right? Because like if I move this, if I move these around, they don't move the joints around. But if I move, if I constrain each of these uh, joints to the circle in my constraint menu with parent, boom. I'm just gonna do that for all these. Then you can see that's moving the joints around now. And yeah, so that's the, that's the that's the concept of it. So we're just kind of first we're making our skeleton then in order to move that skeleton we have to make our control rig then in order to move the mesh we have to use the we have to bind the mesh to the joints to bind them to those joints so yeah that's the that's the whole process and at the end you can have a nice wriggly sausage it's pretty pretty dope pretty dope or you can have a nice oh i need to bind it to that skeleton Skin, bind skin. Mike, you said not to move, not to delete any of the bones, but can we like move them? Uh, after you've made them, no. No, because they, they have a default position. Because like, uh, if I click on one of these bones, that's be, that's being driven by a, a NURB curve. Uh, see how my channels are all blue? Right here, that means that they're being constrained. So if we move this, it, it has like an offset and then a lot of times when you move this sort of thing it snaps right back you see that see how maya just didn't care it was like dude this thing is constrained you cannot you cannot move the joint like that that's not okay but yeah so that's that's what's all about um what well, but you like before you constrain it though you can definitely move the joints around but in our auto rigs they kind of automatically constrain the the rig to the joints that makes sense. A little bit, a little bit. Okay. Um, hmm. Hmm. First, you lost her, and now this. What did Grandma do? You damn. Yeah, gra Grandma's had a had a rough uh, rough semester apparently. Um. But yeah. So notice how I also deleted all the history on the objects. So now my my rig does not work. Also. Notice how, remember when I deleted this control and then the spine messed up? And, but then I, I did control Z. Look how it still doesn't work. You see how the, those joints are just frozen in space? Like if I turn off polygons, look at how those spine joints are just frozen in space. That's not good. That's not good. That's why I always say don't, don't delete things on the rig. Um, I'm sure the more we rewatch this recording, we will understand. It. Also, yeah, we have three weeks on this section too, you know. So like I'm counting this week because it's like the brain sort of the part of the, the lecture, you know, um, I'd like you guys to try along with me, but, um, but yeah, you'll have two weeks after this to get the rig done. And then the rest will be just animation. And unfortunately animation kind of gets uh, trashed because it's like last on the list and y'all are just like, please, I can't, 
can't take any more of my brain, but uh, you know. I'm determined to tackle this rigging beast. Oh shit, Rodney's going. Rodney's about to pop off, dude. Rodney's about to pop off. All right. So that's that's the concept of it. Uh, now we're gonna actually go in and start trying to rig characters. Um, so let me go back to that blacksmith. Beep, beep, right here. And look, empty scene, right? We only have the mesh. Only the mesh in here. My quick question for you. Yeah, what's up? Will you be able to use your blacksmith for this rigging project or we're gonna use our own sculpts? I'm, I'm happy to give it to you if you, if you, if you want. Like, oh. that's completely fine by me. Yeah, Do you, would you? Yeah. Because mine is just the bust of the dwarf, so I won't yeah. have feet, legs. <laughs> so it's okay. like, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, well so um, I, I said earlier that like, uh, I also provide an arm that has like the joints in it already, and then you can just bind that if you want to do that as a as a, as a substitute. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's okay. Like a, like a physical. Okay, got it. <laughs> it it's, it's easier. I, I was going to go into that after the um, the character rigging though. Okay, because, okay. Um, but uh, yeah, if you want this. I'll just upload this to Discord though, if you want to rig this blacksmith up. Sure, yeah, um, thank you. Do, 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 definitely optional though, definitely optional. You can always go back to the arm that I that I put in there. Uh, it's on Beachboard right now. It's just called the arm. It's under the character rigging tab, but let me get this mesh uploaded. Characters, NPCs, blacksmith, uh, blacksmith mesh. So let's go into, let's go into resources, boom. Blacksmith mesh, yeah. There we go. So yeah, if you if you want to follow along, then uh, you don't have a, a a full character, then feel feel free to grab that blacksmith. Oh, I missed a post in here. I have no idea where the skeleton came from. Shield. <laughs> yeah, that, that looks like Maya's auto rig in there. Um, oh wait, no, it's not, because that has hands. Must Maya's auto rigged hat? Wait, wait, Keely, what did you do for this? I don't remember. Where'd this skeleton come from? Because if it if it can have fingers, then that might be. I, that might be I didn't realize it was there until I zoomed out. <laughs> oh like, yeah, you zoomed. How did this get here? Did, wait one second. Let me do. Let me just do a quick rig thing. Because if that has fingers, that might be nice for the class. Um. I I was sort of just poking around in there. Yeah. Genius. I, I definitely clicked on things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm clicking on things as well. There we go. Um, where's the optional hand creation? That'd be sick. If it, oh, fuck. I hope it. Like, huh. they call it the T stance. Yeah, right. T pose. T pose. What are they? What are they doing? It's gotta be T pose. All right. Let's see. Then create. But I didn't put any. There, there can't be hands. For that. How'd you make hands? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I'm not getting the hands in there. But also, I don't really recommend animating on this rig to start off with because it's really it's kind of weird. It's like you were asking questions about IK versus FK. And this rig has like both at the same time, um, like literally at the same time, because most rigs, it's either like you're animating an IK or FK. You don't know what that means yet, but like, um, like it's like a different way of animating. And these, uh, these rigs can have like both at, the, at like the exact same time. And it's like super weird. It's kind of dope, but like, I, I don't recommend learning on it. Uh, Isn't uh, IK inverse kinetics, or am I saying that incorrectly? Uh, yeah, inverse kinematics. Kinematics, there you go. It's like yeah. when you're having your character step on the ground, so it actually looks like it's hitting the ground and mm -hmm. all that stuff, so that yeah. you're planted. Like, like, see how these feet aren't moving right now? It's because mm -hmm. they're in they're in IK right there, you know. Right. Okay. But these these arms are kind of in FK. Again, these are like this is like a hybrid rig, so it's like halfway in between. Like mm -hmm. you can. Like these arms are in FK, but you can pose them as if they were IK by grabbing these things. I and see. then, yeah. So it's, it's a little bit weird. It's a little bit of both, but um, I, I, I don't recommend these ones for, for starting off animating because it's like kind of, kind of can break your brain sometimes. Um, but yeah. Um, all right, so let's, let me open up the 
the flat file again. There we go. Okay, so what we're going to be using is an auto rig from online called Rapid Rig Basic. Rapid Rig Basic, and it's on Beachboard. You can find it. Um, let me grab. Let me grab the. Let me grab the actual like script itself though for you and upload that to Discord because it should be small enough. Documents Maya 2020 scripts. Uh, Rapid Rig Basic. There we go. So let me open up Discord. Rapid Rig Basic. Oh yeah. Wait, let's put this in the resources folder. So rapidribbasic.mel, uh, download that, download that, and uh, yeah, I'll give you guys a, a minute or two to do that. Because some of y'all might have to go on the beach board or something and do it. Beach boards, um, beach boards rig right there is it's it's under the character rigging tab on Beachport. You can see that we have Rapid Rig Basic there. And the optional arm assignment, if you, do, if you don't want to do your character, you can always just skin this arm, and then I will accept that as well. Similar to like the shield texturing, how the, the shield wasn't your character, but like I'll still 100% accept that for the assignment. All right. Does everyone have? Does everyone have the the Rapid Rig Basic script? Everyone got that bad boy. Yes. <laughs> I hope everyone does. I hope everyone does. All right. I'm going to go through this kind of um, in one shot, and then we'll go on break. Uh, for, for dinner, it'll probably be like 40, 45 minutes or something. Um, but I'm just going to go through this one shot real quick, not, not go spend a lot of time on it. That way you can have something nice and fast to look at, um, when you, uh, when you go online. And then after that, then I'll go back through and explain it again when, when we get back from, from break. But yeah, so, uh, first step, we can do a little cool trick. It might work. It might not. If it doesn't work, then you'll have to hit me up. But uh, once you have that script and your Maya open, you can just left click drag that script into the viewport. And then Maya's like, oh, I can just use that script now. And it pops up as very usable. Uh, first step, we're going to do create proxies. So I'm going to click that. And then you'll see it came in as like a bunch of tiny little baby boys. Let's click this bottom control, scale this up to kind of like the dimensions of our character. And then we start actually aligning these points, right? So these points correspond to the skeletal structure of the body, right? And immediately I'm going to click my mesh. And if I haven't, I'm going to add that to a display layer. So uh, this layer one doesn't do anything. So I'm going to click that button. It's now on a display layer. And if I click this twice, it's a reference. So I can no longer click on my object um, because we're going to be messing around with these joints a lot. Now there's a little bit of prep before this, right? So if you have your character in your scene, make sure, make 100% sure that they're completely on this middle line, right? They've got to be perfectly in the middle of that, or not perfectly in the middle of that. But if your if your rig is symmetrical, then your character should be symmetrical too. You can do some asymmetry with these rigs if your if your character's a little bit off, but make sure they're on that center grid. Make sure their feet are 100% touching the grid right there on the ground, perfectly level. Make sure that they're facing Z forward, right? See how our auto rig has that arrow forward right there? Make sure your character is facing that way as well. Uh, one last check on that checklist uh, before we start rigging them. Make sure you have enough divisions along your joints, right? So if you have an elbow, and you you have like if you deleted out like this edge loop, 
that's not good. Like you're going to need a little bit more geometry wherever it's going to bend. Like you got to have more geo in there. Uh, same with the fingers. I know I like fingers are a common place that I've seen students forget to add edge loops. So like wherever I have a joint, like right here in this ring, I'm going to put a joint there. Right. So I want, I want a subdivision on the other side of that or, or just like on both sides of that. Right. So on either side of that subdivision, I want to have some edge loops in there. Boom. So yeah, yeah, I would just go back through with the modeling toolkit and just do some multi-cutting, you know, like just hmm, you just hold control. It's gonna, I'm sure you're getting flashbacks from the spoon assignment at this point. But uh, but yeah, you just go in with multi-cut, add a little bit of subdivisions in there. That's why uh, good topology is really nice too, because you can expand and you can add those subdivisions to where you need to. But yeah, so that was the checklist right there. Uh, if we go back over real quick, model completely center, model completely on the floor, model facing 100% Z forward. I don't, you can't have it rotated off this way at all. Model also has subdivisions for each joint. It's got to have the geometry that we're going to move around, you know. Um, one last little step before we get started here is uh, I like to go to edit delete by type history for this character. And I like to make sure that they're just sitting straight up in the uh, like the world layer of the outliner. So if I if I like when you're doing a lot of Maya operations, there's gonna they're, they're gonna be like floating around here, you know. Um, so make sure that they're just outside of all of the groups, right? Like you don't have them in any groups. Uh, the way you do that is you just do shift P. You can delete all those empty groups, edit, delete by type, history. Um, also for, for some clothing, because I know some characters have clothing, some don't. Uh, depending on the clothing, like I, I think, uh, let's just go back through our, our little uh, art sharing channel just to see. So uh, we could definitely leave the majority of this clothing with the character. However, we're going to have to rig these, um, these uh, little... Uh, I don't know, skirt, like drapery stuff. We're gonna have to rig that separately. That's gonna have to be uh, another skeletal structure in the rig in order to actually move it around. Um, otherwise you're gonna get a lot of like stretching and tearing for when the legs like go through the, the dress. Um, let's see, this character, the cape would need uh, some joints in there if you wanted to move that around. Otherwise it'll just go, like it'll like rotate one-to-one -one stiffly with the, uh, with the upper chest. Everything else on this, that, that should be pretty basic. Those are like preform fitting. This character completely fine. No, uh, no, no clothing on there. Uh, this character, this could be uh, pretty much the only thing that you might rig separately is the hair. Um, everything else is, could be pretty out of the box rigging. Um, again, this character, these clothes are very like form fitting. That's fine. That, that'll, that'll rig nicely. Um, again, form fitting, fine. Uh, I remember this character was off that was rotated away from Z, act like Z4. They're a little bit like 45 degrees that way. So, so make sure they're, they're, they're facing forward. Um, character, perfect. The hair would probably have to be set, rigged separately. Um, uh, Vulpix, uh, the, the tails would have to be, they have to have some joints in there. Um, same with the ear, if you wanted to move that ear around. Um, this character very form fitting again. This one's probably fine. Uh, this character is not symmetrical. Uh, you're gonna have a hell of a time rigging this character. It's got a lot of tails. I, I would recommend going with the arm assignment. Um, this one, yeah, again, this one that we were going over. This one, this character uh, is not a humanoid, so it's gonna be very hard to read. Also, it's just uh, a neck, so. Uh, feel free to to grab uh, another character or something if you wanted to if you wanted to rig them up. But yeah, that's it. That's a quick one right there. Um, most people are in a pretty good spot for this. Yeah, I'd say I'd say Tam is going to have the most difficult time though because you have th this drapery that's going to be annoying, and then the hair drapery as well. But uh, we can get some joints in there as well. Okay, so with that checklist all kind of ironed out. You drag that, that script into your window. Again, I just did this, left click dragged, boom. And then it pops up the UI. 
And I just click create proxies. And then I started scaling these, right? And you see that they're all aligning to Z4. That's why we have to make it conform to Z4. You see that the, the hip and the ankle control are lined up straight up and down. That's why I said, have your legs facing straight up and down. If they're not facing straight up and down, you can always go in with your just tools and sort of rotate those into position, you know? Um, but yeah, the, the arms, we can, we can leave them in A pose. Uh, I kind of like to rig things in T pose though, because it, it kind of helps sometimes with uh, shoulder deformation, if, you, like, if you're gonna be doing a lot of reaching upwards. Um, but I'd say it's, it's not necessary not as necessary as having these all, all straight straight out. Because if, if you start moving this around, see how this knee says that it wants to bend towards that direction? Uh, if you start moving this to the right, see that? Your knee is going to break whenever you bend it. Your knee is just going to straight out bend that way. It's going to look nasty. Uh, it's going to look like they got in like an accident or something. Um, but yeah, so let's go to channel. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to make that a reference, right? I'm just making my character a reference. And now you have a lot of different controls in here, right? Um, but the, the the key is that uh, you kind of just start from the root. It's this big, this is bigger joint right here. Um, you just move that down, and you're going to try to get this into the center of mass. Like think of like the center of mass of your pelvis. Think about where that is. Then you start to go into the hip and the ankle, right? Because if I move this, it's gonna kind of move that little, uh, that knee a little bit off center. It's still staying in, in between and it will work, but um, I try to just kind of move them at the same time to prevent any issues. Um, and then try to get this where the hip is, like the center of mass for the hip. It might be a little bit lower right there. Uh, yeah, it looks about right. And then, align this ankle back. We haven't touched the knee yet. Don't touch the knee yet. And we're just going to drag that down to where the center of mass of that ankle is, you know. Uh, and then the, the toe, this one just sits at the at the very front end of the of the, the boot. And I'm going to move this this little ball back. Don't move it up because it won't won't rotate. Uh, it doesn't, oh wow, it actually prevents you from moving it up. Okay, cool. Nice little safety precaution there. Uh, don't move this one off to the side either. Because if you move these off to the side, uh, it's going to change some, some things about that ankle. Always have the feet pointing straight forward. And I'm going to put that in about there. And maybe a little bit forward. Yeah. So that's where it's going to pivot from um, for when, when, you're, when you're lifting and, and raising those toes. And this one goes to the very tip. Does not be aligned left and right with that. I'm just, I'm just leaving them kind of default. They're all stacked up vertically right there. Uh, and then we move the, the knee. And when you're moving this around, make sure you're in object, object mode. I'm just, to access this, I'm holding W and left click, and I'm just in object mode. So now I can just drag forward on this. Again, don't drag this left and right. Don't drag this one left or right. It's gonna cause you problems. There you go, one leg done, simple. Now we move on to the spine. Uh, so spine one, you can just sit right there. And then if you look up in your, your little hierarchy, you can see that it goes all the way up to spine 04. And this kind of determines where a lot of things are, you know. So let's be your, your topmost spine node. I like to keep it, um, I like to keep it about right there about right there, kind of middle of the chest, like a little bit above the sternum, kind of deeper in there. It's like, it doesn't make sense anatomically um, because like your last point for like your rib cage all moves as one, you know, but uh, it's gonna deform a lot nicer if you have a, a few joints in there. Um, but yeah, if you're ever confused on what one of these are, like if you click on this, you can always look at your channel box and it labels it for you. It's like, oh, this is the shoulder joint. Oh, this is the clavicle. Uh, this is the elbow, you know? So it's, it tells you what control is what in there. So it, that's always a good fallback for when you're, when you're aligning these stuff. Um, but yeah, so now once, once you get that top joint in position, 
then you can kind of get these to be center of mass. It's gonna be a little bit chaotic to see, but yeah, you can kind of just go between your different shading modes. Uh, I might move this one a little bit forward again. There we go. And there's a natural curve to my character's spine. So I'm going to kind of curve these as well. I'm gonna have them not sit on just one line. I'm just, again, going center of mass right here. I know we all, like all of our stuff rotates from that spine, which is on the back, but you keep joints in the center of mass for what they're moving. Because they don't move, they don't work the same as actual bones, you know. They're, they're just a close approximation is all. Uh, next, we start working on the head. Again, note that I'm only doing one half of this. I didn't even do the other half because we have a nice little mirror tool over here. So you can do the left or the right, and then you can just mirror them over. Uh, with that button but i'm doing the clavicle next now clavicle i like to like your clav is basically like really fake right because your shoulder girdle has like what it has a bunch of muscles in there controlling where it goes um and but like this clav we're just going to keep this kind of close to the spine because it's going to rotate from this pivot point and it's going to rotate this shoulder up and down so get this shoulder where it needs to go Again, center of mass, but get that clav, get that clav control in there, uh, kind of closer to the spine. And then, yeah, so shoulder right there. Uh, then we move our wrist into position. And this is, it's very similar to that quick rig that we did in Maya, that like joke one. Um, but it's, it's, you can see that we're getting like actual joints laid where they need to be rather than just a computer being like i'm gonna guess this is what <laughs> this means i'm gonna guess this is where we're gonna put it um but yes yeah, so then I, and that was just the wrist right there um notice how the elbow went into position as well um we could at this point make sure you're on object because remember, we need this arrow pointing that way, right? Away from the bend. Because it's gonna, it, it's telling us that that's where it wants to bend. Because if we if we accidentally move this off that axis, ugh, look at that. His elbow is gonna bend up against the grain of the bone. It's gonna be looking nasty if you do that. So make sure you keep that arrow pointing straight back. Same with these, this knee. Gotta be pointing straight forward, right? Um, but yeah, so back into the hand. We're gonna go through, and I'm gonna turn on my other shading just so I can get this center of mass. Nice and easy to see this way. Let's line this up. Sometimes I turn on my wireframe on shaded button just to see, ah, yeah. So I wanted this to be right here. It's probably a little bit too long for a finger, but you know, our camera is super far away from this guy in game, so we're not super worried about how his fingers look um and yeah you'll notice that these also have that same arrow pointing away make sure that these are aligned with the orientation of the hand right so i'm having those point away from that bend these are all going to bend down right and we can do this and we can move this over as well Oh, I think I selected the wrong. Yeah, there's more more deeper into that. So let's move all of these in here. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. And then these tips, these tips aren't going to really control anything. They're exactly like how that toe was down there. Uh, it just sits at the very end. Um, it's just kind of modeling or uh, it's just kind of rigging. Um, sorry, I'm, I can't think of the word right now, but it's just a common practice in rigging to keep that, that tip joint in there. Uh, sometimes they use it for like IK fingers, which are nice for contacts. But yeah, so let's get these in here real quick. I don't want to take forever on the fingers. And there we go, fine, fine, fine. And then thumb, 
thumb doesn't rotate on the same plane as your fingers, right? All my fingers go up and down like this, but then my thumb is opposable. It kind of it kind of rotates on its own axis a little bit like it's on its own axis out here to the left. So let's kind of angle this one out. We want this to bend a little bit differently than the, the rest of the, the fingers. Also, your first joint is kind of deep in there, right? So like your first joint of that finger is right in there, right? So that's or from the thumb is right in that that meaty part of the thumb. So let's get it back in there. Next joint is in uh, this little part right there. And final joint is in that tip right there. And then we can move the tip just to be at the tip there. There we go. Boom. All right. Probably not going to be perfect, but I'm just going to go in fast for the sake of class. Let's see, jaw, okay, that's the jaw joint. Head, that's cool. Neck, okay, so so neck and head, let's see. Let's move the neck up to the base of the neck first, right in there. And let's move the head up to kind of the base of the skull. Again, we're going, we're going center of mass on this thing, right? We're not going, like if we were to go follow the spinal cord, it would be like, way to the back of this mesh but we're just going center of mass of that neck region right at the base of the skull so somewhere in there and don't be careful not to be moving these things off axis it locks the the points down but like there might be one that's unlocked so make sure you're not messing around with that next jaw jaw is going to go back in your skull about right there like right in front of like the ear about uh like let me take off my beanie so you can see better because if you look at your jaw when I, when i'm opening my mouth kind of rotates from a pivot point back here right about about there so let's get that in there And this guy's a little bit more stylized, so his jaw anatomy is like definitely different than mine. That's okay. That's okay. And then jaw tip, we're gonna bring this down to the chin. There. And then uh, something that's really sick is if you have um, if you have spherical eyes, then we can animate them nice and. Um, and we can move this with, I'm just using my snapping button V to snap to verts. And it looks really messy in here, but I'm trying to find that middle division of the eye, right? And I'm just snapping to verts. So I snap this one close right there. So now it's aligned. Oh man, that's even more chaos. It's aligned with the center of the eye, if we look at that. Uh, but then we need to align it on these axis, axes as well. So if I hold V again, and I drag on this axis, I can get it to the center right there and the center right there. So it's just holding V for all of those movements and it gets it, boom, right in the center of that eye. So now when that this joint rotates, it's gonna rotate that eye perfectly in that socket. And it's gonna look at the characters moving, moving their eye around, looking around and being very convincing. All right, and the last thing, head tip, just bring that to the top of the head. And then at this point, file, save as your scene. And I'm going to go into that. Make sure you're in your project folder again. Uh, desktop, course materials, 426 scenes folder. So do blacksmith or your character's name, uh, proxies. Because these aren't the joints, right? These are just the proxies for them. Um, these are us telling the computer where to put the joints and the rig when we click generate rig in here. Uh, but we also did only half of the character, right? So what we need to do is, since we did the, you can see in here, I've done the left half of the character, right? If we're looking at the character, uh, the right half is not done. Um, so let's mirror this over. 
with left to right. If you did the right side of the rig and you want to mirror over to the left, then you do right to left. But yeah, so now you just click that button and then in one click, boom, gets it all moved over there. Gets it all moved over there. And then last step, I, I would I would save again, I'd do blacksmith. I was, I'll just do it in front of you guys to establish good practice. Blacksmith proxies too. Be say, doing save as during this process is very important because uh, when we're rigging, sometimes we can do operations that are just only good one way. You might bind your skin to your character and you're like, ah, man, this kind of doesn't, this doesn't move too great. Uh, you might have to move some proxies and then generate the rig again and start doing the skinny again. Uh, like, I don't like where this elbow is. I want it to be a little bit deeper in here. And then I want to mirror that over again to the right side. So I'm going to do left to right. Boom. There you go. But yeah, now everything's aligned. Looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Then we click generate rig. Building rig. Whoa down there hell yeah boom there we go now we got our skeletal structure in the scene um and the rig that actually drives that skeletal structure you see that oof oof that's spicy and you can do uh select skinning joints and then shift select your mesh i need to make this not reference anymore and we can do skin bind skin uh the 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 regular settings should be good for this uh just make sure on geodesic voxel um, but even then this doesn't really matter because we're going to redo all of the skinning. Um, some of you might be able to get away with some just basic binding but on a lot of these characters you have to do painting skin weights and here we go so now let me turn off wireframe on shaded and there, there's the magic, y'all. Oof, character is moving around. Again, look at the lat, it's getting pulled out of all sorts of directions right there, all sorts of directions. Um, but yeah, so there you go, there you go. Now, some things like these, uh, these suspenders, I would leave these separate. Uh, because you'll notice that if you try to paint weights on them, it's not going to work very well. You would need instead joints under each of those segments in order to kind of guide exactly where it goes. Um, but you can do some you can do some really cool things with uh, some uh, deformers. And I'll, I'll just show that real quick. So I'm gonna oops. I'm just going to go into face mode. Just like this. I uh, might as well grab this as well, sure. And we can do modeling, edit mesh, extract. Um, I'm also going to uh, delete by type history on, well, first let's find this together. But yeah, we, we've basically done all of the rigging portion of this we haven't talked about skinning yet but this is just kind of bonus material for you guys so if i combine these then edit to delete by type and history uh, if i bind just my my skin so if i select my skinning joints and then my mesh then do rigging skin bind skin boom it is now skinned again, um, but my suspenders aren't moving with the character, right? What we can do is, I think it's click your character first and then the other one, let's see. And then we're looking for wrap. Deform objects by modifying a mesh that surrounds them. Okay, so you have to click this and then the mesh and then deform wrap. And now when you move this around, the, the suspenders will move a lot more effectively. I do have those metal bits on them. And metal bits are always annoying because, like, they they stretch out and that doesn't look good. So, you, if if I was doing a more robust uh, rig for this guy, uh, I would put joints in the in the hierarchy there. Um, but yeah, but yeah, so that's all that's all bound, that's all bound up. All right, so that is that's the like rig setup, right? Um, 
we went over file prep. We went over um, the, the adding divisions and stuff and like getting your mesh ready for it. Then we went over setting the proxies. Then we went over, remember you're, you're doing center of mass for all of those. And then you mirror those over and then generate that rig and then bind that skin, uh, bind the mesh to that rig, to the rig's joints by selecting skinning joints and then doing bind skin. So that's what we've done so far. Uh, that's where I'm gonna leave it for now. Uh, it is 6.36. I'm gonna give y'all a, let's, let's do like a, uh, let's, do, let's do a fatter break. Let's do like a 50 minute break. I don't want you guys to, guys' brains to melt. So yeah, we're gonna do 50 minutes. And then we, when we come back, I'm gonna go over, I'm just gonna answer questions from the class, I guess, and go over different steps. I'm, I'm happy to go over all that again. Um, but yeah, so come back in 50, 50 minutes and then, yeah, then we'll resume. So let's see, six. So come back at 725. Come back at 725, y'all. All right, thanks. No problem. Get into the swing Thanks. of things, but um, yeah, and, but I'll show you guys how to fix like this lat stretching out a bunch. Um, we aren't going to be able to get it to be perfect, you know, it's not going to be one to one with with regular regular humans, but uh, yeah, we, we need to fix some, some of the stuff on here. Um, but yeah, so that's skinning. So I'm going to go over skinning, and then once we hop, well, once we finish with that, uh, I'm going to just hop back into, uh, I don't know, the answering questions from you guys, fielding fielding different questions and uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Okay, so there's a reason why this lat stretches out a lot. There's a reason why this head stretches out. Actually, we got pretty good, pretty good uh, deformation there. Um, but the, the lower part of the neck is still messing up down there. Um, but this is called just deformation, right? This mesh is being deformed by that skeletal structure underneath, right? And every single vertex on this mesh has a value associated with it. I'm gonna show you the real nerdy version of it right now. Uh, so Windows general editor, uh, component editor, smooth skins, and let me select a vertex on here, boom. So that vertex right now, uh, this, is the, this is the smooth skin. This is like the bound skin, you know, when we went to mesh and then did skin, bind skin, geodesic fossil, this is the result of that. Uh, every single verts weights add up to one, and this shows how much each different joint has control over it, right? So you can see that the left shoulder joint has 0.86 uh, control over it. So 86% of that joint's movement gets passed onto that vertex. That's why that one moves out so much, you know? So if I went in to this chunk and was like, hmm, I want this to be like uh, a lot less shoulder influence on here. Like this is way too high. If I do like 0.2 on there, boom, you see those like fly back. And you could, you could do that for all this stuff down here. Uh, L shoulder joint, boom. Then now it's a lot less it's flying out a lot less. It's still not perfect at all, but that's like the the nerdy 
uh, sort of version of changing those values. Um, the regular way that we change those values is with skin, paint skin weights. So if I click on this, just the regular tool, we don't need to do like the options for that. Um, I do need my tool bar out though. Again, tool bar is up here, boom. You can see this fall off, this gradient. And what that gradient means is how much that joint has control over those verts. So black means that the joint that you have selected in this list has no control. White means that it has complete control. So let's look at that shoulder joint. We're looking for this joint right here. Uh, L shoulder J in the list. Boom, you see that? See how much, how far down that white extends? That's what's causing that to, to bevel out. It's because this joint is rotating away and it has a lot of control over those verts down there. And so they're getting pulled along with it. What we need to do is tell Maya, nah, we, we're, we this, this shoulder joint does not have that much control over it. We need to move that control down to, uh, to joints that are more in that area, right? Like the spine should be the one that's kind of controlling where those verts are going, the, these spine joints. So we could, right now, I'll, sh I'll show you the, the kind of wrong way to do it, or like the not as foolproof way to do it, like it can work, but um, basically you have a bunch of locks on all of these different joints, right? And that tells those joints that we want those weights to, because these are called the skin weights, you know, we want those weights to stay the same, that, that influence, when that influence to be locked down. So what we do is we right click whatever we're going to change and we do lock inverse selection. So we're like across the entire model, lock everything down. We don't want to mess with anything else. And then we're looking for like spine, Th this spine joint or this spine joint to be like, yeah, this is what that's what I want to receive those. So let's look through our list. It looks like that's spine joint three. So I want spine joint three to have some gray, some like dark gray influence over here, or maybe even like a light gray to have like a lot of control. So I'm going to unlock spine O3J and I'm going to do mode paint and I'm going to do add. And what add is going to do is use a paintbrush sort of thing to, you see right there, it's going to add influence to that joint, right? It's adding to that, to that uh, spine three. Uh, you can increase the size of your brush by holding B and then left clicking and dragging. See that? B and left click and drag. Um, and so you can just add turbo influence to that, right? You add all the influence in the world. Whoa. So it's adding all the, since every other value is locked down, that's adding the max from L shoulder J to spine O3 J joint, you know? Um, and you can crank down the opacity of this. So it's a lot less severe. Oh wait, let's do, um, let's do a little, a little bit less. Actually, let's, let's crank down the value instead. So we're just adding that. Uh, Maya's still not liking that. Specific, specified weight cannot be set due to locked influences. That's kind of a, a bug. Uh, and what I like to do to get around that is to do normalize weights, set that to post. It's gonna ask you a question. And then, yeah, so now you're getting a result much more akin to what you're expecting. Much more akin to that. And then you can just kind of slowly paint that back in right there. See how that's actually getting that lat to be in the right spot. And also doing the other side? No, uh, you, you only paint one side of the, of the character and then you do uh, skin, uh, mere skin weights. But that's after you've gotten all of it looking good, you know. Um, so yeah, you don't have to paint both sides separately. Uh, you can just mirror those bad boys over. But yes, you just, your goal is to try to get good deformation in there. And then if you want to lock down spine three, move down to spine two and be like, I want this to get the rest of this weight around here. Then that's, that's what you do. You just unlock it, start painting. Um, 
now I, I did mention that this is like not the proper way to do it. And I will, don't worry, I will show you the proper way to do it. But this is just conceptually to understand moving weights around. We just, I just kind of want to communicate that there's a few ways. You saw me changing the weights like numerically in that one component editor earlier. Um, but this is just a nice visual way of doing that same exact thing. And yeah, so you can get some nice clean deformation in there. The only problem is that I've painted a lot onto that onto these different spine joints. So sometimes when that happens uh, and you start spinning the model, that's not nothing too bad if we turn on our wireframe on shaded. You can get some like tearing in there. And what you can do then is go, um, well, I, I, to access paint skin weights instead of going to skin paint skin weights every time, I highly recommend just getting used to holding right click on your object and then going to paint skin weights tool. Um, but yeah, you could lock down that shoulder now because you're like, oh, that shoulder has a good amount of weight on it, you know, um, like it, it doesn't need, it's not affecting as much of the, the torso anymore. You can really see it if I uh, turn off uh, my normalized weights interactive. Boom. Uh, you can see that it, its values are a lot darker down here, right? It's not pulling those as far. But you might see on some of these, like between spine 02 and spine 03, it's like a little bit of a harsh fall off right there. So if you just uh, right click, lock inverse selection, so everything's locked down and only unlock those two, you can kind of just, uh, you can switch over to smooth right here. And oh, one second, let me go back to post in normalized weights. You can just smooth that gradient between them. And it's gonna give you like a lot, uh, a lot cleaner deformation in there. It's gonna be super sick. But yeah, so that's just the concept of what these weights are doing in here. We're basically just gonna be putting, uh, ar arranging those weights in a way that makes it so the, the geometry deforms a lot nicer. Um, let me show you what a, a fully painted version of this looks like or uh, a version of this where the, all the skin weights are painted fully. So I'm gonna save, save scene as, always save scene as during this process, rigging can have a lot of pitfalls. So 100% save as, um, as much as you can. Uh, let's do blacksmith skinned. So we skinned the, the, uh, the mesh there. Um, so let's go open scene. I'm going to navigate to the actual rig file for this guy. And this will be good because I have a lot of extra little bells and whistles in there as well. So blacksmith rig, blacksmith rig, there we go. Let's check out what's going on with him. Noise, noise. All right. So let's get into this window. So you can see that uh, my skeleton is different from the uh, basic skeleton, right? Like I, I have the, the spine just like you guys, but then I also have a bunch of extra joints. This is what I was talking about, like how you sometimes you need extra joints to fix different deformation. We don't need to go into that in class, maybe only for stuff like Tammy's big draping sort of dress those might need a, like a, a chain of joints in them to, to properly animate around um but yeah a lot of these have different purposes like this this uh these little joints in here uh, let's turn off my thing right there let's turn that on uh, if i go into my elbow and start moving it around um you can see that I have some fixed joints in here to, to sort of pull on that bicep so it's not clipping as much. And I, we can pull on the, the gauntlet as well to, to prevent clipping. So that's, that's how you could have some, some extra uh, joints in there for, that's, that's for the future. This is just like for this class, 
the regular skeleton, that's that's fine. Does he have nipple joints? No, unfortunately, no. We, we it was out of the budget. We couldn't afford nipple joints for all of our characters, so we just put it on the main character only. No, I'm kidding. There's there's no nipple joints on this guy, but there are his like suspender joints, you know. Um, but let's take a look at his skin weights, right? Let's take a look at them. Um, it'll be a little bit different on this guy because I have some twist joints, but I'll show you guys the uh, the leg specifically. So let's click on the mesh. And let's hold right click, paint skin weights tool. And boom, now we're in the thick of it. Let's find, I'm gonna try to find his legs. So you're gonna go to use, use your model because I don't really like how she looks. Oh, okay, all right, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, understandable. Um, do, 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 do. Um, clavicle. Suspenders, ah, there we go. So I'm about to click on the left hip joint, right? This one right here. And watch what like the values look like on that. Boom, you see that? This is a very important concept to understand. This joint is going to want all of the weight between it and the next joint. So it kind of controls all the stuff after it. If I click on the knee, you'll see the same thing. So boom, knee. And it, it again, it wants all that weight between it and the next joint. Because if you think about it, uh, let me switch over to IK, I mean to FK, my bad. So it's a lot more visible. When this joint rotates with this control, it's going to want to pull all of those subsequent joints with it, right? Or a subsequent vertices with it. Because they're along that bone, right? That bone stretches all the way over there. Um, so yeah, it needs control over all of those. And then if I click on my paint skin weights tool, um, where is it, this one? Uh, yeah, same for this one. This joint starts right here and it extends to this next joint. And that's where, the, that's where it's gonna wanna control naturally to keep that weight. Let's look at this, uh, let's look at the spine a little bit. Boom, spine one. Controls from it mostly to that spine two. It controls most of that zone. Um, spine two, same thing. Uh, it does have a very gradual fall off, so it's a little bit harder to see it there, but it is controlling mainly from there to that next joint. Same with spine three. Uh, spine top, I, I declined to use it. I, I It was a bit too high up and I wanted this joint to be a little bit more in the center of mass, you know? So I was like, I'll just, I'll just leave that off, you know? Um, neck controls from the neck joint to that head joint. Neck top is basically the, entire, the entirety of that, you know? Because it stretches to that next joint. Same for, same for all of these. Um, the face is a little bit madness, um, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, there's a lot of like tiny, like you can see, let me, like lower eyelid only controls like from this joint over to these other joints to get a nice smooth close in there. When you, when you close his eyes, it'll get a nice fall off in there. But yeah, so that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about skinning weights, right? Uh, so it's not really weight like, uh, like we think of weight. No, no, it's not. It's like the domain of the joint. Yeah, it's the joint's influence over the mesh. It's, it, it, yeah, it's what it's in charge of, yeah. So it, it's what that joint controls. And yeah, I suppose weight is like a, a little bit of a confusing word for that, you know. Um, but yeah, so that's weights and what they do. Is anyone confused about that? I'm more than happy to talk about that more. So I want you guys to really get the concept down uh, today, so so there's like less confusion in the future. I thought we were talking about like heaviness. <laughs> it's basically like a puppet. Mm -hmm. 
I've accepted, I've accepted that I'm rewatching the lecture. <laughs> oh no. I mean, yeah, that it's, it's, I, I'm going to go over this again in, in next class as well, or for the next two weeks, because it's a complex subject. Um, well, it's, it's not like super complex once you like decipher it. It just takes a while the first time to like get a, get a grasp of it. Um, but yeah, but yeah. Is there going to be the same kind of issues if we do the arm? Yeah, yeah. So the arm, um, I'll, I'll do that after I start doing the character skin weights, but I'll, I'll show you guys the arm. But yeah, you'll see that, that I'll run into the exact same problem. Um, but yeah. So I'm going to hop back into blacksmith skin. And I'm going to show you my way of skinning this bad boy. This way is uh a lot less prone to issues a lot less prone to it um it's kind of a dumb way to do it it's kind of brute force but you're gonna get results that are better than if you just sat there because like maya spreads your weights out a lot it spreads the influence of those joints out a lot over like weird parts of the model so we kind of want to really dial in and tell Maya, no, we want all of our weight to be on this joint, on this joint, on this joint. We want to go like one by one through there. And it's really tedious. Um, but at the end of it, when you have a cleanly deforming character, it's so sick. It's so worth. All right. So the way we do that is we basically trash all of our original, um, all of our original uh, skinning, right? So if I hold, if I click my mesh and then hold right click, paint skin weights, we're going to do something that's going to look tragic. So we're going to click on main hip. We're going to right click unlock inverse selection. So every single weight on this is unlocked. Every single joint, like the, the eye vertices could end up on like the foot vertices because they're unlocked. Everything's unlocked. Everything's free range, you know? But what we're going to do is we're going to select main hip joint. And then we're going to go to paint right here, this, this little icon or this little little bubble. And we're going to do, uh, we can either do replace or add. I'm going to do add. I'm going to turn off post. I'm going to do interactive. I'm going to do add and then crank it up to max value, max opacity. Replace probably would make more sense for you guys. So yeah, I, I'll, I'll do replace. So it's gonna replace all the values on what I have selected with uh, a value of one. So this joint is gonna get control over the entire model. So let's watch that. I'm gonna click flood, boom. You see that? And all my skin weights, are freaking dead. They're gone. They're so gone. And it's oh wait, I didn't I had my character in a in a different pose. Let's move this back. Do, do, do. There we go. Sorry about that. This will just help with readability of it. There we go. And let's grab this one. Yeah, OK, there we go. All right. So I'm going to do that again. Paint skin weights tool. Main hip. Everything is unlocked. Every vert is up for grabs right now. And we're going to have main hip grab all of it. So now, now if I rotate any of these, they're no longer going to have, oh, wait. Sorry, I didn't turn off. This needs to be on interactive. There we go. Then replace. There we go. So you'll see every joint no longer has control over anything. All of our skin weight is lost. And you're like, Mike, that's so sad. And it is sad, but we're going to make better skin weights than Maya ever could by, by automatically doing it for us. Um, some. Mike, I'm so, 
I'm so upset. Why did you do that? <laughs> you'll see. You'll see. Because um, we need to tell Maya exactly where to keep all that weight. So if we go into paint skin weights tool again, now we need to go to left hip joint, right? And remember, left hip joint wants all the weight from here down to the knee, right? Uh, I'm actually going to give it all the weight from the rest of the leg. So if we go into select, and if we go into vert mode, and at this point, it's good to keep your joints on a reference layer. It's going to be really helpful because otherwise you're going to select your joints all the time. It's going to be really annoying. But what we can do is left click drag over here, boom, and select all those verts. Then I'm going to select more verts, more verts. Um, and yeah, so that's those, those are pretty much selected now. Let's get this one as well. Let's look at the backside, looking pretty good. There we go. All right, then I'm going to go back into paint mode instead of select mode here. So I'm going to go to paint. Then I have that left, left hip selected. And then I'm going to go flood. Boom. So now I just gave that hip all those, all those weights rather than the main uh, control. So if I go back to that one, see how this one no longer has any say over what these verts do? It's all up to this left hip. I'm going to do the same thing for the knee. So I'm going to click knee and go to select. And I'm just going to left click drag over all this geo right there, all the verts. Remember to be on, have your joints on a uh, reference layer. Otherwise, you're going to do this. You're going to drag through. I'm just going to select the joint instead. Really annoying. Really annoying. So don't do that. Keep them. Keep those joints on a reference layer. And then go back to paint. And now you have all those verts of that lower knee selected. We're going to flood that. Boom. Now, if you go back to that hip, it no longer has any say about these lower knee things, right? So if we, if we start moving our control right now, you can see, boom, it's just a, a, a clean fall off right there between the knee and the thigh, or the, the knee and the hip joint right here. It's just a solid fall off. Same with this between uh, the, the pelvis and the leg. You see right there? And it's all torn up. Uh, and then we're going to go back through and fix that later. But let me let me get the rest of the floods uh, worked, worked out. So let's go to verts. Now let's do the ankle. Boom. I'm going to hold right click paint skin weights tool. We're going to go to ankle, and then flood. Perfect. Go back to select. I'm going to go to vert mode again. I'm going to select the verts of the ball of the foot. I'm going to go back to paint mode. Go to the ball. Get a flood. Hell yeah. So now you can see exactly what's going on there. Oh, that's the other leg. Um, but yeah, perfect, perfect. So now if we if we use some of our uh, our cool controls in here, like ball up down, and see exactly how that's that's working. But it's a it's a harsh fall off at each of those at each of those junctions. So now, uh, so so if I was to do the whole character, I would do this same method with everything, right? So I would go into the spine next, and I'd go to verts, and I'd just be like, "Give me all these verts! I want every single last one of these. I want all of them, right?" And I would go into my paint skin waste tool. And I would go into, I would close this other hip, go into spine one. And I already had all those verts selected. But let's give them the verts that are above spine one, right? From spine one to here. Uh, we're going to paint. So spine one, now we're going to flood that. Boom. Same with spine two, select. Back to vert mode. I'm going to deselect these verts down here. Boom. Back into paint mode. Make sure, yeah, spine one has that. Then we're going to go to spine two. We have all those verts above spine two selected. Flood. Spine three. Back to select. Vertex mode. I'm going to deselect these ones down here. I'm deselecting up to that 
that spine three joint, right? That spine three joint is what we want to get all those, those values. Go back to paint. Spine three, flood, boom. Uh, and then spine four, we can kind of give it a little bit of, of extra weight in here. Um, but it's not super important. Like we, we already have a lot of the, uh, the twisting of this, right? We have a lot of that working, but it's crumpling in on itself, right? Because we haven't smoothed out those values yet. So yeah, I would do first a pass of just flood filling every single joint like that. Just flooding every joint like that. And remember, just keep it in mind. The joint wants to control, it wants to have the white over all the verts between it and the next joint in the chain. So the shoulder wants all of the all of the weight between this and the next elbow, right? Elbow wants all the control between it and uh, this twist joint. This twist joint wants all of its control between it and the, the wrist, you know? So I just go through, do a pass of that. It's gonna get you some clean fall off like that. And then what we do to make it look actually good at the end of that is let's get our let's get our model like posed up like this. Hold right click, go to paint skin weights. Now during this operation, this is when you start locking things down again. So I'm going to right click, lock inverse selection, and then let's fix this sort of tearing between main hip and left hip, right? We want this fall off to be nice and smooth. We can use our smooth brush right here. And hopefully it doesn't give us too many complaints. Uh, if it does give, if, if you see a vert kind of not smooth out correctly and fly off somewhere, um, undo and then make sure you switch to normalized weights to post and then you, you should be good. Um, that's just a little, little side detail that might happen. Um, but yeah, so you can see that as I'm smoothing out that value, the deformation is getting a lot better at this leg. And it's getting better in a way that we tell it, right? We need to tell Maya exactly where to kind of smooth out this weight. Feel free to extend that smoothing, you know? You could even go down to this layer of verts right there. Smooth that up. I'm just left click dragging over it. Uh, you can turn down how severe you want the smoothing if it's going like way too much for you. Uh, but I'd say this is a pretty good value for when we're doing our first pass of, of uh, smoothing. So the steps are pretty, pretty simple, just flood to each different joint, exactly what you need, and then smooth the distance between them, right? And the last step is to just smooth, like it, to just dial that in. I'm gonna go back to, to this hip and knee now, and I'm gonna lock that main hip. We don't want this hip to be unlocked anymore. We don't want it. Uh, cause we're just only worrying about this junction between the hip and the knee. So now if we unlock both of those and then start smoothing, well, there we go. There we go. Might be able to borrow some weight from there with a little bit of smoothing. And now when I bend this leg, look at that, it's a lot cleaner, a lot cleaner. And then if we go into paint skin weights, we can smooth this one out here as well. So it's not as severe and we're set. We're absolutely set. So that's, that's skinny. I don't expect anyone to get to this point. Um, immediately, you know, but I want you guys to know where we're going. I want to talk about the concepts so you can kind of get used to that. And then to do the ankle, same thing. We just lock down that hip because we don't want this hip 
to get because if we if we have this unlocked if you have like three joints unlocked and not two some of the weight of that uh like some of these verts down here could transfer to that hip when we smooth that's the danger of having the uh the the whole thing unlocked you know that's why that's why i say go like by two only have two unlocked and then you can work nicely and smooth out everything between those two you know so let's do this ankle just again going over that everything else is locked down i'm only dealing with the weights between the ankle and the knee And then let's do the, the ankle and the ball right here. And now we have a completely working foot. I could probably do with a little bit of more, a little bit more smoothing here. There we go. Yeah, it's looking better. There. But yeah, and th so that's how we do it, guys. That's how we do it. Look at that ankle. It, it looks like it's moving nicely now. It's not going to have like some weird pulling of different stuff on there. Um, that's, that's the process. It takes a while. It's uh, a lot of students' least favorite part of the class, simply because it's tedious, but when you get some nice skin weights going, ooh. say I wanted to kind of smooth this little pocket down here again. Um, what we need to do is unlock the two the two joints that have control over that area, right? The main hip and then left hip. That's where that sort of fall off is. We unlock those and we can just smooth again. You know, see how it's starting to 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 help us out there. That's what it's all about. Uh, you can even go so far as to click one of these joints and say you wanted to push this back in even more. You could add some of the weight of these back onto that main hip, right? You could add some of it at like a really low value. Let's crank this value down really low. If I go over these, boom, see how they're kind of just popping a little bit more towards that main hip. That might not look, I'd be careful of doing stuff like that because that might look good from one bend, one side, like if, if the leg's going this way, but it might look worse on this side, depending on how it, how it goes. It actually doesn't look too bad, so I'd feel free to keep that, you know. But yeah, that's, what's, that's what painting skin weights is all about. That's what it's all about. I don't expect you guys to, like, for that to sink in today, but since that's where we're going in uh, next class, uh i want you guys to be thinking about that concept i want you guys i want that to kind of sink in a little bit you know just sink in a little bit does anyone have any questions about skinning and people do this for every character <laughs> mm-hmm mm -hmm. yes they do Every single okay. character you've seen move in a video game has had this done to it. Every single one. All of them. But it's honestly, like, dude, it, here, all right, you guys want to know something really, really fucked up? Is that for uh, tech artists, who are the people that do this stuff, this is their favorite part of the job. <laughs> <laughs> are you kidding me no no wow uh yeah this is their favorite part they love this. <laughs> i mean it's very it, once you like once you understand it like at a at a deep level like it's very therapeutic you're just like ooh, ooh. now this character's moving nice it's like every single bend is looking really good you know um because like, like i said they have to write scripts that like fix Care, like say a, a character updates its rig um, and then like some of the skeleton mismatches where the old skeleton was, they have to write scripts that are like, okay, uh, bring in the new character, take the old animation, uh, move the waist down by this percentage, uh, solve the new IK with this certain offset. So it's like a lot of, a lot of coding, you know? 
Um, that's their least favorite part, they say. At least at the, at the few that I've talked to, you know, that's their least favorite part because it's like, it requires a lot of thinking, you know? This, this is their like chill out time where they're just like, huh, hell yeah. I have a nice moving character, you know? Uh, makes you appreciate game developers more in their work. Yeah, right? <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that goes into it. Same with VFX, you know? Like VFX people have to do the same thing, you know? Uh, I'll admit, I would be thrilled if I can make any character move and breathe life into it. Ah, okay. If that's, see, I, I get that feeling from like good animation, like when I get that, like, right. But I also get it from this. Um, so I feel like I can, I, I could be like into either one of those. What's, what's worse is I get it. I see that leg and I'm like, fuck yes, that leg is moving. Oh. <laughs> uh oh, Keely's on a slippery slope to wanting to be a, uh, tech artists hey nothing nothing against that i love tech artists they're they're the best i understand the fun of trying to bring the character to life with these it's made a video game at all yeah well also in movies they have different rigs right like they can listen video games they all have theirs it's just like joint based stuff like this but in movies you'll have musculature under uh, like on top of this like sort of skeleton and you'll have an actual skeleton in there sometimes. So you'll have like physical things inside the character that can move around. So like, uh, let, me, let me pull up, what is the place? I think it's called Frame Store. I think the people, Frame Store. People are putting fake musculature in their rigs? Not for video games, but for, uh, for movies, yeah. Let me, let me show you a VFX breakdown, VFX. Breakdown. Uh, Avengers should have some. I feel like I'm gonna cry just thinking about that. <laughs> show it. Let, let's see if it shows. Uh, if they show it off in this. Do, 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 do. Okay. Okay. Oh damn. Oh wait. Is it? Yep, yep. See, see, skeleton and musculature for the Hulk because he has those huge muscles, right? And his rig is so cool that, like, when he when the animator pulls in that arm, that that bicep mu muscle flexes out, and it, it gets that that fidelity. You know, do they put this in fighting games? uh they they put it in 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 some higher end games for sure they cheated though they're not using they're not using muscle rigs like that they're using um uh something called vertex displacement where it's like basically a, a, a an image like a, a color image or a grayscale image black to white and then you kind of turn on different parts of that when like, like like kratos in god of war he's like super jacked you know so whenever he would like do like any sort of arm raised they would have some displacement maps to kind of push those verts into a more like musculature pose so it's it's very similar but it's kind of like a, a cheaper way to do it but yeah they go all out on these rigs you know like they look at this oh even the raccoon even he's even got the the skeletal system in there look at that freaking yeah you got to get it online for a rocket too you know like Cause that stuff also helps with, um, they have, uh, they have something called subsurface scattering, which is like, if you know, you know, when you like shine a flashlight through your hand or through your ear, you can see like the warm light on the other side of it. Um, this sort of stuff really helps with that because if you have that underneath there, um, that light will kind of run into things and then not go as far. It'll make your, your characters look more, uh, realistic that way. But yeah, look at that shit. Look at that. Whew. Look at <laughs> I like this. <laughs> that freeze frame is so good. Look at this, it's so creepy, dude. This is so troubling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm snipping tooling this. No, this thank is you. This is oh, God. this is going in the Discord forever. And they've probably just got like a golf ball and a stick right there, right? Mm -hmm. On set, yeah. <laughs> or a, yeah. A tennis just, ball. Just some 
something just floating in there, just so you have that eye line. But yeah, look at the end result, though. Whew. I feel like Grunge Thor was uh, very prophetic for 2020. <laughs> it's so true. So true. <laughs> we thought, oh, how funny. He's always in sweats and he's drunk and depressed all the time. And now here we right. are. Oh, man. Yeah, too real. Too real. But yeah, yeah, look, I'm wearing oh, jeans. Look at this Vista shot. Mm, all 3D. Yep. Look at those suits. All the suits were 3D the whole time. Look, oh, they just took the rest of them out. Look at that. The suits what were they, fake. What did what? they do with the rest of him? It's gone. Well, I mean, it's uh, been covered up by CG. But look how good that looks. Like, that fooled entire, like, like millions of people, you know? Was it? Was it worth it to do a suit in CG rather than just have a couple costume designers make the costumes? Like, a, I, I think what, from what I heard, because I that question was asked a lot. I think they didn't have the suits designed at that point in the in the project when they were getting these shots done. So they're like, uh, "Fuck it, let's just CG them." Wow, that's great! Look at that! My God. Damn. Damn. But yeah, this stuff is so wild. I love watching it. I love watching it. Um, but that's uh that's like the that's like the high end of rigging, you know. That's the high end. Um, so if you really like this stuff, then then definitely think about pursuing it. You know, it's it's a very sought out, like as Sarah was saying, very sought after position, you know, like people need people that are able to set this stuff up you know uh also definitely makes a lot of money definitely makes a lot of money i would drive up in my honda civic to work every day and i'd see the tech artists roll up in their sports cars and i'm like ah yeah they're, they're taking they're taking sanity damage but they're getting uh they're getting paid for it you know uh, they're definitely getting paid for it but yeah so that is uh is that paul rudd Hell yeah, it's Paul Rudd. Safety damage, yep, yep, it's, it's rough. High Asgard, even his head, so they had to improvise. So Shelly, that fur, yeah. That, yeah, that fur is all like, um, it, like each different strand is like placed in there. Um, they use a plugin called XGen. They, they probably have their own proprietary software for that actually, but they, a common, the, the one built into Maya is XGen and it's pretty cool. Uh, especially since it gives you a bunch of splines and you can um you can simulate physics on the hair after it's already made so you can like flop it around you know uh, and all that stuff but yeah but yeah some cool stuff can you use all that money for therapy yeah exactly <laughs> right <laughs> now you're talking how do they make asgard look so damn good yep that's environment artists for you they're um there's something magical. There's something magical. But I mean, you you know a lot of the basics of it, you know. Like they they have a at some point they have a high poly version of those buildings. They probably have a low poly as well. They would actually probably just bring in the high poly straight and just not worry about it because they're so far in the distance. But if they had to do any any sort of texture mapping, they'd have to UV those. Um, but yeah, but yeah, y'all y'all. Just think about like how much y'all have learned in like one semester for this, you know. And think about like where you could go. You could de definitely bring that to the next level, you know. Do they sometimes use mini models for cities? Yeah, yeah. Like, um, uh, what's the city called? I think it's called like Minas Tirith or something in Lord of the Rings. Uh, uh. Yeah. So like for like a lot of the a lot of their shots, they had like this super, you know, like get at it. No one wants no one wants to see your face, dude. Want to see it cool? Yeah. They have like this super miniature version of it. Um 
Yeah, I remember the behind the scenes for Lord of the Rings. Yeah, exactly. Right, Ninja's Tirith right here. Boom. Uh, but yeah, nowadays mostly it's mostly a lot of uh, 3D models. I feel like this. I feel like this isn't the one though. I've seen a different one. They, they created a bigature, is what they nicknamed it. For a bigature. Like, um, yeah, because it was like one 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 hundred thirteenth scale, like Eight. of the actual size. Yeah, there you go, bigatures. <laughs> but it's actually quite impressive. I love the they they gallery. like. They like poured like rice down it to like get the water physics right or something. But look at him painting it. Like that's how big that thing is. Oh, oh this is that that other. Oh yeah. man, they had a few of them then. Oh my god. This is why like even if you watch it now, it still holds up really well yeah. because they were physically filming it. So mm -hmm. these incredible miniature artists that made these um, set pieces. It's so sick. I can fucking love Lord of the Rings. If yeah. you're in this class and you haven't seen Lord of the Rings please do yourself a favor and watch it because they're amazing just films in general but also for like just everything that we're doing you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh yeah here it is frank no shows more pictures of it ah <laughs> yeah look at that oh <laughs> baby damn I think they even built it at scale too because they needed to have the model like the actors on it mm -hmm. for some some of the parts mm -hmm. so they used like forced perspective and like i feel like lord of the rings was one of the first films to figure out the blending of cg backgrounds and like live action oh so, yeah a hundred percent they brought it to like the next level like, yeah just, oh man so sick i just loved when peter jackson looked like that though it's very relatable <laughs> <laughs> someone who's just, just looked crazy all the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah he definitely yeah. was yeah running around barefoot around new zealand filming <laughs> things yeah that's the dream right yeah, yeah. perfect and you know it's interesting you say that about edgar about the hobbit because like the storytelling wasn't the greatest right but it was still pushing the tech because that's when they first started using the red camera developed by oakley oh, really? oh, oh yeah it? that oakley like was the one that developed the red camera which mm -hmm. is like the strangest thing to me and then it got sent to like peter jackson to play around with film and so he was playing with different types of film grading stuff like that he's a he's a huge tech nerd right so he's always trying to push like language of film and it kind of went like a little overboard like some of the watching some of the stuff from the hobbit is like riding like a roller coaster <laughs> in yeah. a sense like a video game roller coaster really? but uh you know it still changed on the technical side, the landscape of cinema, because that's when people started filming with the 4K stuff. So yeah, 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 no, 100. percent Yeah, that that's crazy. Yeah, because red red cameras are now like pretty commonplace, right? Yeah, but back then he had the first one. <laughs> so, yeah, so there you go. Peter uh, let's see. Which do you prefer, Mike, mini or CG? CG all the way, all the way. I told you all, I'm a 3D boy, born and raised. Or not born, raised, raised to be a 3D boy. <laughs> a thick wall, hell yeah, it is. Lord of the Rings effects are amazing. The hobbits are all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, th I think that's just kind of a more, I feel like some of the set pieces in Hobbit are just like weird from a like, like they're just like not possible from like just a physical perspective. Like that part where like Legolas like jumps on like falling stones, you're like, that's that, not how gravity works. Like what, what are you doing? So I think it's just like, they were given a pretty un, like unachievable task, you know? Cause they were also on like a crazy schedule for those movies. I think about that movie Smog all the time. Yeah, yeah, dude, Smog was pretty cool. Smog was pretty dope. All the gold too, that like fell over the, the walls as they were moving through the sets. Uh, movie spogs, a scar for animated dragons. I, I'm out. Yeah. Also, I hate the animator in me hates the what is it? Smog behind the scenes. Benedict Cumberbatch motion capture. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> like they have this, and they're Alex. like, they're like, oh my god, look at him. He's he's becoming the dragon. Let me tell you right now. Dragon anatomy and human anatomy, very different. So all let the man of this, have some fun. All of this data, uh, unusable. The face, you might be able to do some stuff for that. They do have some cool uh, sort of, they call them solves, where they take all the data of the movement of these points, because this little tiny camera is filming that. 
and then they uh, they plug that into a, a, it's called a fax based rig, which is like it's it's a rig in the face that is more muscle oriented than just random joints like a like a, a Pixar rig. You know, they probably just have the joint in the mouth and stuff for all those lips. But the fax based rig is like based on muscles and it kind of pulls things in certain different directions. And that's how a lot of like high fidelity stuff is, is animated and, and uh, rigged. Um, so yeah, you could transfer that potentially onto a dragon face as well. Um, but yeah, all, all of these like behind the scenes things are just ridiculous because an animator went through here, did not use any of these body points for animation's sake. They are just completely animated on that rig. There's no way that they used it. Did data. they not have someone on set who pretty much told them like, hey, we don't need to have him laying down like that. Wait, really? <laughs> could, should they? No, I'm, I'm asking like, what, shouldn't they have like an animator? They, they like, probably do, but they, they're also probably like, the actor is gonna get more into the, the feeling and mindset of a dragon if they're actually like this, you know? So then they're probably just like, yeah, let him do his thing, you know? <laughs> Give him a blow up T-Rex costume then, like not like this. <laughs> I don't know. If we yeah. did, we, would, we wouldn't get this, <laughs> amazing imagery right? <laughs> yeah yeah this uh, is just yeah hysterical <laughs> he speaks believably yeah yeah it's fine i agree it's okay yeah and martin freeman oh yeah yeah just uh, well all the golem stuff was, was pretty cool too that was like groundbreaking for the time as well like that was that was one of like the first like believable 3D characters, he, and he had to be. I'm not remembering his character name. Um, also, the arcs just seem so. It just didn't look right. Yeah, they had like a little bit. Of, it was like they were like too smooth and specular. Like they had like too much shininess on them. Edgar, it was kind of weird. Um, yeah, they originally because it was all beefy men under that latex. Yeah, and it was all painted up and like dirty. Yeah, it looked so sick. If I were going to come back, I would ask for a bigotry to climb around on. <laughs> A picture. <laughs> oh man, that's amazing. That's amazing. All right. Well, that is that's all for the lecture. I am uh, I am down to go over it again though. If you if you guys want if you guys want me to show you, uh, and if you want to follow along and and not not do the skinning but do like the the skeletal setup. If you guys want to follow along there, I'm more than happy to do that right now. Um, but yeah. It's up to y'all. Uh, press one if you want to see me do the skeletal setup and if you want to follow along. Press two if you want to just say uh, call tonight. Call tonight. Mm. We'll, let, we'll let chat decide. Let's see. Let's see. We got a 12 in there. Two, two. Oh, ooh. lots of twos. One, we have one, one, two ones. Okay. Okay. Two ones. Brain frizzazzled. I am weak. <laughs> Let's just hope my my uh, throat holds up. Let's see. Oh, we got, we got four ones. All right, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. You, you guys um, can can feel free to mentally check out, but I don't want those people that want to see more instruction be uh, left without it. So let's. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna open up blacksmith mesh again, and I'm gonna start over from the very start. Actually, Mike, oh. I was wondering, would you rig the arm that you provided? Or oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. I'll do that. that. Yeah. That way, maybe you can follow along since so it's just an arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I, I completely forgot about that because I was like, Thank that, you, sir. That, that, is, that, is an, that is an option for the homework. Yeah, because then if we follow along with you and it's just like one, you know, limb, then maybe that's yeah. like more doable. So I'll. I'll admit I spent like a solid probably 20 minutes just trying to find a model to use. <laughs> oh yeah. And then yeah. I was like, oh, we have, could have used the arm. And at that point it was too late. Yeah, well the arm is like simplified too because it's not a full body, you know? Uh, one second, let me log into Beachboard so I can pull, you guys can, you guys can look at your beautiful faces in the time being, but yeah. I don't, I don't know if I have like that arm file even like local on my computer. Oh my god, this arm file is terrifying. <laughs> it's just disembodied it's just, arm. Yeah, That's all you get. It's just, it's just <laughs> on the plane. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I don't know. 
just double check. What do we need to have before next week? Yeah, yeah, uh, good question. So next week, just have your character textured and um, you can just send a, a, um, a render from Substance. Uh, let me do, 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 pull you guys over to the other side. And you can, yeah, you could just do do that simple render that we that we did. A lot of y'all already had like it pretty much done. Um, one second, my computer's gonna die when I turn that back on. But yeah, you can just render your your guy out like this, and then turn that in, and uh, you'll be good. You'll be good to go. Uh, make sure that like it says that it's completely done. Like, see how up here it says status done. Make sure it has that. Otherwise, you, you'll turn in like a kind of fuzzy image, probably. But yeah. So that's next week. But I also want anyone that's like rigging their character. I really want you guys to try this stuff out because it's it it's hard. It it takes it takes three weeks, like minimum. You know, uh, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be a pretty pretty tight deadline on, on this one. Like it it's it's that's why I give the arm as an alternative. You know. But I do want to see some some rigged up characters come from this class because you guys' character models are already like pretty amazing. So I'm sure that you guys can do some dope stuff for uh, for the rig. Um, let me sorry, let me, let me pull the. You guys can get to see yourself again. Content, and then. And oh yeah, uh, character rigging arm. Here we go. We download this. All right. So, so let's do the old arm. Downloads arm. I'm going to open this up. Don't save. And here we go. Yep. Nightmare fuel confirmed. This is an arm. <laughs> it's uh, uh, it's it's just hanging out here. We have the rig. You see right here. Uh, it kind of looks wild because it's like uh, it, this rig is intended for like a full character, but it's like a modular one. So I just took the the, the arm apparatus out of it. And then uh, we're just left with this, you know. But you can see that all the joints are moving around with it. You can see all of them are represented in there. And it's basically the exact same thing that I was showing on the character, just scaled back a little bit. Just scaled back a little bit. So if I select this first joint in the chain, you see how it has uh, most of it, the most of the rest of it selected. Um, but you can just feel free to, to drag select over everything. Joints in Maya are, have like highest selection priority. So you can just straight up left click drag over all those and then it will select only joints. Uh, it's kind of useful, but like for every part, every other part of the pipeline, it can be pretty annoying because you'll be randomly selecting joints that are in your scene. You'd be like, oh my God, I don't want this, you know? Uh, but yeah, select all those joints and then shift select your arm. So you have both of those selected. Then you're gonna go to skin bind skin you probably don't need to change any of the options in here just feel free to click bind skin because we're redoing the skin weights anyways we're doing it the caveman method we're doing it that brute force method so uh, now with this default bind you can see that um when i when i bend the arm it like takes too much of that palm with it you know it's gonna be annoying to fix um when you bend down these legs wait one second let me turn those let me turn off the joints so we don't see them right now when we bend down the finger it takes like pieces of the hand with it too like so we need to fix that right and basically if we go to our paint skinning weights tool um let's go to the wrist joint wait now yeah so look how much weight the finger has it has way too much like that joint's way up here but it's controlling stuff way behind it. That's how we're getting that bend up behind the finger, you know? Um, so what we need to do is mess around with all of those. Let's see what has the weight 
for this area. Yeah, so it's pretty much all the fingers, all those base finger joints and the thumb. So the thumb has way too much as well. Um, so I told you I'm gonna go with the foolproof method. At this point, set your joints layer to reference right there. And then click the object, hold right click, paint skin weights tool. We're gonna go to that first uh, joint. Let's just go to the shoulder rather than either the, the clavicle or, or the uh, this other one in this list. Yeah, just go to joint shoulder and everything's unlocked. And let's just flood this entire, flood the entire arm to value one, opacity one, flood, boom. Right there. Everything's now on that shoulder joint. Next step, go to elbow joint. Right here. Um, wait, yeah, elbow joint right here. There's there's like a little bit of extra ones in here. It's like the FK and the IK chains in there. We're just looking for the regular arm elbow joint. That's the one. It, it's it's it should be pretty visible. It's the one that's it's the ones that show up in the viewport. See when you click on them, you can see that they get selected here. That, those are the ones that we're trying to bind to. So now we go into this one, elbow joint, and then I'm gonna left click. Select some verts, go back to paint, elbow joint, flood, boom, there we go. And then next up, we're looking for wrist joint right there, perfect. Go back into select, deselect all of those verts, and then paint and flood. And then, yep, you guessed it, just more uh, selecting verts going down to the joint that you need. Like this is finger 01. So finger 01 controls everything from this point on. Nothing behind. That's how you get that weird bending. And then we're going to select. And I'm just going to select all the verts of the finger. It's going to take some, some careful selection. So I just left click drag from the top view. And then I'm just control shift left click dragging to add to that selection, you know? That way we're not losing anything. Nice, easy way to, to, to get that selection working. Uh, and then we're going to go in, paint, flood. Then you're going to go to the next finger joint. Go back to select, left click, drag, get all those looking nice. Paint, flood, wait. I need to go one more down in this. Yeah, okay, there we go. We're, no, we were on the right one. Never mind. No, no need for alarm. So I'm going to go back into the next joint, do select, then I'm trying to just select all of these verts on that last digit. Go back into paint, then flood, and there you go. So now that finger is, it has the, the flooding pass on it, you know. Um, and automatically you can see it already bending a lot better. Like it's not, it's not taking so much of those verts back there. That's exactly what we want. Um, I'm just gonna go through, I know it's gonna be kind of brainless, but I'm gonna go through every finger because I just wanted to reiterate every single step of this to you guys. I'm gonna go to finger two, and then we need to go to select. Then we're gonna drag. If, if you're not in vertex mode, you can always right click and go to vertex mode right there. And I'm just left click dragging and then control shift left click dragging to add to that selection. And yeah, it might be tedious for you guys, but I want a complete 100% walkthrough for this. Let's go to paint. Then we're gonna flood fill on here. Do add, or you can do replace at one one, either one. It's gonna flood in there. And then- Did you say to bind the skin? Yeah, that was the first step. Yeah. Okay. Yep, yep. That's that's always the first step right there. The bind skin. Because otherwise you don't uh Maya doesn't have any connection between these verts and the actual uh joints. It needs that initial bind. Uh, then we go back to selection. I'm gonna deselect these verts just for speed. Let's go back to paint. Uh this little button is really handy to go back to the joint you had selected. Boom. And you can verify that it's the proper one that you're flooding to. Boom, there. Uh, if these joints are kind of too huge for you, 
you can always go up to display, animation, joint size, and then drag this down. Just for readability's sake. Um, and we can go back into select. We need to deselect these because we're about to fill joint three. So joint three needs everything from it on to be filled to it or to be flooded to it. Uh, and then flood. And I'm going to do finger three next. So here we go. And then we can go to select in here, vertex mode. Left click right there. Perfect. Flood and then select. I'm going to deselect these because this joint needs everything beyond, you know. Then we're going to go back to paint, flood. Three, select, deselect these. Get everything beyond there. Go back to the paint. Blood. And four, let's do select, left click, drag. Boom. I'm just getting all this stuff in here. Nice, nice. Paint. Make sure I'm selected on the, cor the correct joint. And there you go, flood. Let's do four. Select, left click, drag. Then, oh, let's go back to paint. Like that, flood. Then four, select, left click, drag. Go back to paint, flood. Let's look at our, our list next. We need to do the thumb. Thumb 01 started from right here, so it needs every vert from that area on. So let's go into select. And we're in vertex mode, so we can just drag select over all those. This might go a bit too far that way. This might go a bit too far that way as well. And then we go to back paint. Then flood. And next one. I know, very repetitive, very repetitive, but this is the way. This is the way it's done. And just select, drag selecting over all those. Just doing control shift to add that selection. It's looking good. Then we go to paint. Make sure we're on the right joint because this joint two needs everything on. So flood. And the last one in the list. Back to select, get all of those in there, and then back to paint, flood. All right, all right, Whew. just did a whole pass on the hand. And so immediately file, save scene as, arm, just say skinned one, just do arm skinned one. Um, because if, if something messes up with your weights right now, it'd be really annoying to go back and do all those, you know? Um, so let's see, uh, let's, let's see how it looks when we, when we bend these, uh, you can bend these finger controls with these nerves, can, these nerves curves straight up, or you can go into these little guys right here and just do the curl. Either it's going to work, but yeah, look at that. Now the, the hand isn't buckling in on itself. Weird. Uh, when uh, when you we, we tilt these, but now the fall off is a little bit too harsh, right? Fall off a little bit too harsh. We need to smooth all of those joints out. So let's start with the base. Hey Mike, yeah, how do up. I open the how do I open the tool settings for the weight painting tool? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, tool settings are always this little hammer button. Boom! So if you click that, it's off. If you click that back on, it might be low. It appears. It's like the it's this top right icon. Okay. Uh, question for you, Mike. So I got step two. 
Okay. When, I saw that you were curling the fingers, right? And it was able mm -hmm. to curl the opposite direction. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> which is horrifying. Uh, would the rigger be able to limit that type of thing? Oh, God. <laughs> Jesus. Um, yeah, they, they, they would, they, yeah. They would to limit. Okay, I'm just curious if they would set limits to that type of movement so the animator is not like, uh-huh, mm -hmm. wouldn't it be funny? Well, sometimes. <laughs> well, I mean, like, say this was keyed up here uh-huh one second let me get make an actual key on the timeline there and mm -hmm. then over the next like few frames it would go down here oh then they would want the fingers to bend the opposite way right yeah for like way. some overlap if you're doing like some stylized movie then mm -hmm. you could you could get like a key of overlap in here you know um right there right it looks like it's breaking the rig a little. Oh god. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and that's that's straight up what they call it. So then you see that get a little bit of overlap in there. It's really fast and hard to see, but but it's uh. So yeah, you can definitely do stuff like that. Like sometimes if you're doing some weird arm stuff, mm -hmm. you can go into to FK and then rotate that arm past and hyperextend to like get some real snappy motion, but uh. You know, I think I saw a League of Legends trailer mm -hmm. where they actually hand keyed it. What they weren't using um, live reference or or what the hell they call uh, it? Mocap. Thank you. <laughs> My brain yeah. is not there. But yeah, they were hand keying, and so they would break the rig a lot for some really fun animation. I'll oh, have yeah. to find it. But they, they, yeah, please do. Please put yep. that in the art sharing channel because it's like I'll see if I can find it. I'll it's see. so that that, that animation is so sick. You know. Um. Let's see, fun anecdote regarding rigs and animated dragons. During the Forbidden Friendship sequence in How to Train Your Dragon, they had to break Toothless's rig to get him to sit like a person. Oh, I don't, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt that. Because, uh, yeah, all, all creatures can't move so nicely. A, a lot of times, like, we'll hide things, too, off camera, just to frame things nicely. Like, like uh, I've had scenes where, like, the camera is, like, cropped in on both, both characters. And then, like, I, I, one of the characters uppercuts the other one. And, like, I physically have to just move the waist up to some, kind of sell that. And it looks so dumb from, like, any other perspective because he just, like, pops up. And, but, like, in cam, it looks, it looks great. So always feel free to cheat things for cam when you're animating. But, yeah. So next step in this, next step is smoothing right so now we have to smooth out between all of these joints right so uh go back to your paint skin weights it always helps to have the 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 rig sort of in a pose that's that's bent uh you could even feel free to set keys on this this is a little bonus uh i don't want to overwhelm you guys with more things but if you press s on one of these controls it's going to set a key there so now i can kind of see what it looks like both bent and extended without having to go back in and extending it out again, you know, and I'm doing all that stuff. Um, so that's how I work. That's just the S key, and you'll see that the you'll see that the key appears on the, the timeline. Um, we'll talk more about that during animation. So that's just a little bonus thing. Don't worry too much about it. But um, but yeah, so we'll get there eventually. But let's go back to our top thing. Okay, so we have to go to the shoulder joint. So let's lock inverse selection. So now we have only have shoulder joint unlocked and we need elbow joint next. So that's that one. So unlock those two and we're just gonna do smooth. Remember it's B, holding B and left click drag to get a smaller paintbrush radius. That's your little radius right there. That's that red stuff. Um, and this is getting a little bit too severe. Let's do a little bit less. Yeah, there we go. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, some of those kind of buckled in a little bit weird. So, uh, in during times like these, during smoothing, sometimes you want to do post and it's going to smooth a lot more, uh, in a lot more of an expected way. And let's go to elbow, let's smooth this as well. Let's get all of those. We're just going between those two those two joints in the list and smoothing them, right?
And there we go. So now we have a smooth elbow. And uh, yeah, we're going to do that for the rest of the character or for the rest of the, the arm. If we're doing a full bodied character, then we do it for the rest of the character. But, um, but yeah, there we go. Boom, bang. I'm going to select elbow and then we're looking for wrist joint right here. Perfect. And we're going to smooth this. We use a smaller brush because it's a little bit of a smaller difference between these two. We're just hopping back and forth between these. But this is how you get some nice, clean deformation. That's the goal. That is the goal. Remember how before when that elbow or when that wrist bent this all crumpled in because it had the elbow had way too much weight on this for it. it had way too much weight but now we get to control that precisely precisely so now the wrist doesn't crumple in on itself right there Let's see how it looks when it bends down it doesn't look too bad it doesn't look too bad at all this is kind of unconvincing. I might smooth out some stuff here. Let's go to wrist. Let's just do that a little bit. Boom. And there we go. Feel free to delete your keys if you if you go with my keying method um, by just dragging over to the key, right click, and delete again. Definitely optional. I don't want you guys going too far into animation stuff yet. And then uh, let's do the let's do the finger right here. So paint skin weights, and we're gonna lock inverse selection. We want wrist and finger one. Here we go. And I'm gonna shrink my brush again. I'm just smoothing. It's just smoothing from here on out, y'all. Only smoothing. Going back to wrist. And then pushing this in there. Finger, we can smooth this out. You're going to get nice, convincing deformation in there. Go. So before, when I would rotate this down, it would be pulling verts from like over even as far as here up and would be like really curvy and unconvincing. But now we're dialing those in. It's looking, it's looking nice that way. I'm going to smooth between these ones. There we go. There we go. There we go. It's looking good. Looking good. Mmm. That's juicy. All right, I'll do the last one here, and then I'm sure you guys can figure out the rest. It's the same method as before. You just lock all the ver uh, all the other joints uh, besides the two that you're smoothing between, and then you just smooth. Remember, I'm on normalized weights post right there for smoothing. Uh, for flood filling, I, you go on interactive. Um, because I, I've noticed that Maya sort of bugs out when you're doing the smoothing sometimes on, on the joints. It says that they're locked down when it's like only two joints that could be locked between. I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to transfer weights between those. But Maya just struggles a little bit with it. That's fine. 
Yeah. 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 You're doing what we need to have by next week. What's that? Um, just the softening between the joints, or at least. The- no, this is doing three weeks. The 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 rig. Okay. Yeah. So, is what you're doing kind of how you complete the rig? Yes, like this is the last step. So remember, uh, first step is get your mesh into the seam, have it face Z four, have it centered on the axis. Then um, make sure you have divisions on each of the joints so that you can actually bend them. Um, next step, drag that script into your scene. Drag the script into your scene um, and then do the generate proxies and then match those up to the center of mass of those joints in there. And uh, then, uh, yeah, mirror that over and then click the generate rig button. That's that's about where I'd want you to be on your on your personal characters is just the generate rig button. And I'll, I can show that process up to that point as well today uh, before the end of class. But yeah, so that's that's the process though, right there. We just flood fill everything to the proper uh, area. And then you just smooth out the harsh transition. So now if I go back, oh, back to my paint skin weights, you can see that's like just a smooth transition between all of those different joints in there between all of those joints. Nice little gradient right there. And that's good. Uh, in case anyone was wondering, because I do, you do have to be in object selection to get all the joints and stuff in your tools settings list. Ah, okay. It was just like, what do we have to do to like get all of the joints and stuff in the thing? I was like, oh, I, I see. Yeah. I'm the fool. No. You just you've never done this before. You're not a fool. You're just new to it. Here we are learning how to rig a disembodied arm. And there are cinematics like this. Let's see it. Let's see it. All of us looking at a disembodied hand, and then we look at this. <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. greatness like, uh... from small beginnings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I but think also it was... think about how many hundreds of people worked on this, you know? So, yeah. So... I think that on the older trailer, that was the one I was um, thinking of where they hand keyed everything. Not entirely sure about this one, but it still looks like they did some. Like I, traditional principles in there. So. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they hand keyed this, you know? Yeah. Um, because a lot of the stylized stuff, I know Blizzard cinematics, they, they hand key a lot of their shit too. So mm-hmm. uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, this watching the like other trailer was bizarre for me because like everything I know about League of Legends is that killer music video they put out like yeah. a couple <laughs> years ago. <laughs> that's that's it. Same. I'm just I mean, like, I wow. I don't play League. That that lady <laughs> kind of looks like that other lady. <laughs> Look at him. He looks like a rock star. Right. <laughs> this dude. Yeah. I think wasn't he the one who imprisoned her in a lamp or something? Like I thought there was another cinematic that like she got freed. I don't know. I I have a friend who like yeah. is in school to do these things like because of League of Legends cinematics. Oh mm-hmm. hell yeah. I'm that's pretty sick. sure that's that's what his thing is. Yeah. Ooh, a buff lady. <laughs> <laughs> Love to see them. <laughs> Priorities. Oh yeah. Oh, I just love this. You're like, okay, that they clearly did not mocap her at all. <laughs> no, like, how do you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do you mocap that? But really well done, though. Oh yeah. I like that guy's shoulder pads. Mm-hmm. They're so bulky. Look, look at her. Look at her legends. Right. Oh. Oh no, they're fighting each other. (laughs) 
gun? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like guns beat uh, swords. Uh, but it's like a magic meta. gun. It's a magic gun. <laughs> True. Does that make it even better than a regular gun? I don't know. I would think so. I would think so. Does the addition of magic to a gun make it better or worse than a sword? I feel like it might go slower, actually. Those yeah, bullets I were feel looking like, pretty slow. They might I feel nice. like if you have a magic gun, like that lets you bring a sword to a gunfight. <laughs> right. <laughs> But the uh, but yeah, so that's uh, that's rigging, you know. Um, I'm gonna go over. I'm just gonna do because uh, Veronica asked me to go back to the other scene. Um, but basically, you just soften all of those fall offs between all the fingers, so that when I'm grading it, I should be able to go through every single one of these joints, have a nice clean fall off right there. See how these are kind of tearing apart really harshly. Mm -hmm. uh, make them more like this first finger right there. All that okay. turn. So yeah, if you're if you're doing the the arm, then make sure you do it that way. Uh, there you go. So now I'm gonna go back to full character. Blacksmith mesh right there. Cool. Just to kind of reiterate what uh, people do in their their own character should be should be looking for. Um, again, grab that rapid rig basic script. Uh, have your character middle of the scene, facing Z forward. Uh, also, make sure you have enough divisions on each of your joints so you can bend them properly. Um, and then we drop, drop in this rapid rig basic script, left click, drag it in your scene that should pop this up. Then we do create proxies depending on your, on your scene scale, this might be like too big or too small, just uh, click that bottom node and then scale it up to a reasonable size. And then, uh, and then to go in and you're gonna wanna first add your, your mesh to a display layer and uh, go over here, drag this down. And you're, you're going to center of mass on these. Remember center of mass. So I'm going to, and, and always remember that you can, you can see which one you're keying in here. Um, so this is the root. That's going to be like the base of the pelvis. This hip is kind of unnecessary, TBH. Uh, we're looking for this hip, left hip. Move that center of mass, then match the ankle. Uh, Move around in object mode with W, hold uh, hold W and left click to access this and you can change this to object mode. So you can get real nice sizes. And I'm just putting this where it belongs. The ball of the, of the foot goes where like the ball of your foot is in your own shoe, you know? So let me move this knee. Don't move this knee left or right. Make sure this, uh, this arrow is pointing forward. Drag that into that knee area. Then um, for this spine four, bring this down kind of center of mass of the spine. Um, like the, the, the kind of um, was rib cage area, that upper rib cage kind of like in the, in the heart area. Uh, and then you can move these, kind of curve them back in. And we're just trying, trying to keep those center of mass, like I said. Don't drag these left and right. I think it limits you from doing that, but just don't don't try to drag the spine off of the center of the axis. Um, clavicle, keep that close to the inside of the of the spine. Uh, shoulder, drag that out to where the, the shoulder kind of bends, and then make sure it's looking good from every every side there. Uh, clip the wrist, drag that to where the wrist goes in here. And rotate this into position. Have these arrows pointing away from where the, the fingers are going to turn. Uh, 
do and then match up all these fingers. I'm not going to go through all of them simply for time. And then move those into position. Yeah, take, take more time on that to get that center of mass for all those joints. Make sure your elbow is pointing away from the uh, from the 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 actual elbow, like the way that it turns, because it's going to rotate that way, um, or it's going to rotate away from this. So it's going to it's going to, the that arrow should be pointing straight back into space away from that elbow. You see that? Um, then. Get this neck at the base of our neck right here. Head, that's going to go base of the head, center of mass of that neck, right at the base of the skull. It's going to go center of mass. Jaw, it's going to kind of rotate from, from like this ear area, lower ear. It's a little bit different from my guy, but just kind of look at your own jaw and see like where you kind of pivots from when you're, when you're opening and closing your mouth. Head tip goes to the top of there. This eye, uh, we can hold, it'll be nicer if I do this. We can hold V to snap to vertices. So we're gonna snap to this middle vert and then we're gonna snap to the halfway point of this vert to get it completely in the center. And if you have spherical eyes that is, if you have non-spherical eyes, you can't really do that, and these controls would be kind of useless. But that's fine. And there you go. Rig is, uh, or proxies are set up at this point. Uh, if you did the left, you're going to mirror left to the right. And then save out a file of this step before you generate the rig, because something might be, something might go wrong. Like, I have my ankle a little bit too offset. So I'm going to move those over, you know. So something could go wrong there. Uh, you always want to have a nice backup save. Then you generate rig. And it's going to think for a little bit while it does that. And there you go. So that's kind of like where I want you uh, character people. Uh, uh, that's where I want you character people to be. Uh, for next week, uh, as well as having your, your textured model ready. Uh, I understand that it's, it's a, it's a decent amount of, of stuff to do, but, uh, but I mean, like you, you saw me just bang that out in what, like 10 minutes. I, I mean, I, I obviously know what, like how the process goes, but like still it's, it's pretty fast, pretty doable. Um, if you want to experiment with like the, the bound skin, uh, you can, you can select your skinning joints right here. Then select your skin. We have it on a reference layer, so let's turn that off. So select your first, select your joints, and then your skin or your, your mesh, and then bind skin. It's computing some shit. There we go. Boom. And you can you can start moving your character around. It's been months, but we can finally start moving these characters, you know. Uh, go. Like that. There we go. But yeah, that's the magic. That's the magic, my dudes. Can you make them do a backflip? Uh, if you gave me a solid amount of time, yeah, hell yeah, <laughs> absolutely, I could. Absolutely. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's up? Can you just quickly remind me of your office hours? Um, they are just the hour before class. Okay. Yeah. No problem. One question. Let's say our characters didn't have five fingers. They had four. How would I mm -hmm. go about that? Um, yeah. So you would just have, you'd use your auto rig and, uh, let's open up. Let's do proxies too. So let's say that my character was missing a finger, right? So let's just go in. I'm just going to my mesh. I'm going to chop off a finger. 
How could you do this? And delete. And put this over. So nothing is there now, right? Um, this is exactly how it happened. I would just have a, a rogue finger control. I'd probably move it further away so it's not like doesn't get any in the way of the weights at all. Um, and then I would just do generate rig. I already first that's right there. You go generate rig. And then slice skinning joints. Let's find this guy here. Skin find skin. But yeah, there we go. And uh, we can just, if, you, if you're really not using these, you can just control H to hide them. Um, oh wait, no, we want to see like the specific joints right here. Oops, not that one. All right, so control H, cool. And then you can control H to hide. Um, oh, it looks like they, they disabled that. Well, that's a shame, but it, they'll, they'll just be floating out there. And then the rest of the character will work still. So you can move those around and stuff. Ghost fingers. Yeah. The floating ghost fingers. But yeah. Makes sense, Raphael? Uh, yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah. No problem. Uh, also, Veronica, yeah, feel free to hit me up whenever. Like, if you, if you have, like, questions about something or, or if you're uh, – or anything. Yeah, yeah. I'm always that's what that's what the discord is for it's for hitting me up thank you I'm gonna try to I just sometimes I have questions and I'm not really sure how to ask them because yeah. I don't really know what's going on well I mean that's even that's even better right because if you knew how to ask them you could probably google them but there's probably like some terminology that you don't know that was like my struggle when I was learning shit because I was like why is mesh why mesh not have a uh, color and i was like on like uh seven mode or whatever so mm -hmm. then like i it would it would just be unlit and then i i'd be like struggling uh so yeah feel free to hit me up for that stuff too like if, if, if something's like, troubling you like that um, because i probably you, i probably can like figure out what's going on like Go right. google is never precise yeah right Typing um, random yeah. words related to your problem into Google is such a mood. But it's also it's also a big skill, you know. <laughs> Why blood skill. not green? <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's everything for the 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 rig stuff. Everything. It's what that if, that's the that's the hardest uh, lecture of the class, the hardest one. Is it terribly difficult to do a character that has a tail? Uh, no, no. Um, All right because you would you could just all right so let me just make a like make, let me make a tail on this guy also what was your question about um the alex rig why is she made out of triangles um because when you so it's ripped from the game engine right that yeah model. so uh on game in game engines when you import models they automatically triangulate them so like let me make let me make a cube right here so you can just see what it hap what what it's doing um let me smooth this out boom so that's all quads right basically when you bring it into the game engine it goes to as it mesh triangulate yeah boom automatic triangles so even though they were once quads they are now triangles so it really is just <laughs> You never use triangulate as a word in the real world to describe making something into triangles. <laughs> right? It's just a complete, like if you Google just triangulate, it's going to give you like coordinates. It's not going to give you turning quads into triangles. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, maybe triangulatize would have been a, a better word for them. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so let me, let me make a tail for this guy though. Do, 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 do. Just open the model. I was like, this is everything Mike told us not to do. 
This is all <laughs> triangles. This is all. Tri I mean, yeah, I, I, you can definitely hide triangles and stuff, but I tell you guys not to because it establishes good workflow, makes you think about topology and stuff more by by being like, oh, I can't use the triangles, you know. But uh, you can you can sneak some s sneaky ones in there. Triangles all the way down. I look away for a moment and then I see this happening. What are you making, Mike? <laughs> I'm making a, uh, okay. a blacksmith with a tail. <laughs> okay. okay, got it. That's from his behind. I thought it was his front. And I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, like Mike, a uh, little bit, a little bit strange for you. Yeah. Showing this. Um, yeah, you're still recording, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> oh, very exciting. Okay, all right. So here we go. We got a tail and Keely. What's wrong about this tail? Um. That's not how tails go. Uh, but <laughs> besides that, <laughs> um, what is no wrong rig? with this tail? Uh, that's part of it. That's part of it. Um, Straight. It's a that's lot not of part stretch of it. shirts. That's, it's not a, it, it can be this straight when we rig it because then the animator would go through and make it nice and squiggly. Uh, no edge loops. Or, yes. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. So. I mean, all, all of them were, were pretty valid, though, you know, um, but there's not enough edge loops. Remember I said you got to make sure if you're going to put joints in something, it's got to have some, it's got to have the definition in there. You have to have verts in along this, the length of this to move around. Um, so if we go in here, one, I'm going to uh, just go into my, oh, man, modeling toolkit, multi-cut, and we're just going to put some in there. There's control middle clicking in there, but bang, we're gonna get enough to make it look decent when it when it rotates. And we basically have to do a little bit of our own rigging, like what I showed at the start of class. Think about that sausage that was that I had. Um, we're gonna go to the rigging menu, skeleton, create joints, and let's go in here. Boom, bang, pow, bang, boom, pow, bang, bang, bang. So we have a bunch of joints in here. And if we open up this list, we can also do a, a quick tool called, where is it? Skeleton, it's orient joints. Uh, it looks like nothing changed, but it's gonna, they're, they're gonna rotate a lot nicer now. Um, than they would have before. Um, but yeah, there you go. Uh, then you need a control rig on top of that because we need to be able to move those joints. Um, so create, um, let's see, NURBS primitives circle. Circle is my go-to guy for this. And I'm gonna scale this up a little bit and I'm gonna press control G. It's gonna be group one. So I'm going to say tail control. It's really useful to, to start naming things nicely in here. Tail control one. Um, it's really nice to, to, to name them properly in there. And then what you're going to do is you're going to select that group that you did instead of the actual control. Because this control right here has a lot of uh, nice values on it. Oh, it has some, some scale in here. Let's move let's remove that with modify freeze transformations. Boom. And then we we just drag this up here. Let's get this to be the base of the tail. And there we go. Let's see, how does that look? And then you just control D, duplicate it down. Mm-hmm, a hundred percent, a hundred percent, perfect. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna do that. Uh, and then control D, as you said, and I'm gonna use V when I'm moving so I can snap to that joint that I made. Ooh. I'm gonna do that again, hold V, it's gonna snap straight onto that joint. I'm doing it again, control V after I duplicate it. Here. And Tammy, this is exactly how you would do your rig for your dress as well. Exactly how you do it. Um, there we go. So we have a bunch of these groups now. 
and now you need to you need to open up that like seven you know and then middle click drag this tail onto that one uh so you're basically just dragging that hierarchy of um, of tails onto the last one remember so when we open so it up basically childing them all to yeah I'm, 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 I don't know if you can use child as a verb, but there you go. Yeah, you because you can use parenting, you know, uh, that's that's what the uh, that's what they say. Parenting um, upwards. Parent, yeah, yeah. So then if I expand my hierarchy, you can see it's group one. And then right on top of it is that tail control. And you can see that they have all zeroed out values, nothing in there. It's perfect. That's exactly what we want on all the, the actual nerve controls right there. All of them had zeroed out values because they have that group underneath it, storing the uh, translation and rotation for us. You know, um, so you have that big hierarchy there. Uh, next step is to parent. We we need this joint in the rigs hierarchy, right? So we could uh, we could find them both in the outliner and then middle click it middle click drag it on there. You can also just select the child and then the parent and then press P. Boom, you see that? See how it automatically connected it right there? Oh, wow. And then we need to do the same thing for this joint, uh, this group right here. Uh, we need to group this, uh, we, this needs to be a child of that waist control, right? Because that waist is gonna be rotating around. So the child, the, this, this thing needs to be a, a child of that. Uh, so let's do this control because this one can it's like a double waist control in there. Um, so what we need to do is select this uh, select the the child, which is this top group in that chain and then uh, parent and then press P. Well, so now when that moves, it's gonna be moving with it. Last step is to actually set up the um, the constraints between these because these aren't currently driving the joints. So uh, parent constraining is the exact opposite of uh, parenting, which is really dumb. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Uh, but Maya just does that. So what it is, think whenever you're thinking of constraints, think driver, then driven. So driver is this circle, driven is this joint, constrain parent. Driver, driven, constraint. 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 There we go. So now we have all those lined up grouped properly and when I rotate them aha it's rotating the joints and then finally when if we actually select our, our skinning joints then uh, then the mesh we can do skin bind skin and on like long straight things like this usually the the regular bind is like really good so you might not have to flood fill this onto other things. But now when we grab all of these, and move them, boom, got a tail. Yeah. Little working tail, pretty nice, pretty nice. If only it were that easy in real life. <laughs> oh man. I maybe once like cyberpunk technology comes along well enough, we can just all put on tails, you know. But yeah, but yeah. But yeah. Thank you. So there you go. No problem. Driver driven constraint. Yep. And then child parent P for parent. It's it's really dumb. I don't know why they I don't know why they made it the complete opposite, right? It, it, it makes no sense. Um but yeah. The world of NFTs is wild. Yeah, what the fuck? Well, like the the some guy I used to work with at Sony is a fucking gazillionaire off of it now. You should uh, look at that link, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, prepare yourself. Let me see. 
Let me see. I can't is click it, on that. I can't either. That's weird. Let me just really? copy oh. the address. Oh. I, put it, no. I think it's a Zoom thing. I put on Discord. I, I have like a browser add-on that like makes me wait a minute before it loads Twitter. Mm, okay. Oh my God. And yeah, I can't click on, I can't click on anything else or it stops the timer. This is something. <laughs> the, this, the caption. <laughs> this this is like, is what am I looking at? <laughs> my God. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's a, uh, I just saw it. That, I'm sorry. Like when you were doing the whole tail thing, I'm like, I, you've lost me. I'm just too distracted I'm by like, nitro like, fart thunder. Nitro <laughs> fart thunder. Yeah. <laughs> I'll look at the video of feed later, but for now, I'm just highly distracted by someone poured energy into rendering. This. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they did. <laughs> All right. Um, well, it's quite the it's been quite the lecture today there's a lot of bit different parts so feel free to skip around the video if you're if you're just getting your characters set up then just look at the the very start of it you know we don't have to go through all of it but um but yeah lots of info in there lots of in the info for y'all mm -hmm. um but yeah so let me know if you guys run into problems uh i'm sure you will this is this is the most problem intensive part of the course um, but yeah, but after this, we get to animate our characters. So it's gonna be super sick. Nice, nice, nice. Um, Y'all are free to right. head out when, uh, when you need to. But I'll, I'll, I'll stick around and answer questions if y'all got them. Otherwise, right. I'm gonna get some dins, you know? You should get some dins. <laughs> you should get questions from me at some point during the week. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like I'm sure I have questions, but I don't know what they are yet. <laughs> yeah, I mean you guys haven't run into the, the problems yet, but yeah, it'll definitely happen. Um, I will say I haven't I've heard of rigging before, obviously, but like I haven't really heard of skinning before. So this was that part was completely new for me. So I was just looking at like, all right, I'm gonna watch the video later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. No, it's it's the that's the uh, other brother of, of skinning, you know. I mean, yeah. of, of rigging. Of rigging. It's, it's yeah. Skinning. yeah. But it makes sense because if you want it to deform the way you want it to along the rig, then you have to pretty much give it that guide. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You have to like straight up tell Maya because Maya's just like, I'm trying my best, you know, but <laughs> I'm, <laughs> like, I'm a dumb computer. <laughs> I'm a program. Okay. I'm not, I'm not over <laughs> like, the fact that this guy made this and then he just is <laughs> a close up of the face of the guy gives his fat. Like, <laughs> yeah. <that's> <laughs> Just, of like the flaps like oh man i was just like oh i could use i needed a laugh today <laughs> this is <was> pretty great <laughs> yeah. I, i'm looking at the embeds on discord just yeah. like there's a 360 he's like he, he really committed there's like different backgrounds different angles and shots and there's just like the amount of emotional power he put in the other faces is pretty pretty strong but like jesus <laughs> oh, it's incredible love it I'm, i saw the maturity of a 12 year old <laughs> in the art world that's like uh it's a desirable thing yeah it really is it is having fun the whole time yeah I just, it just i was just randomly scrolling on twitter and like what, what am i looking at yeah, what, what, is, what has mankind <laughs> done i think you're looking at art yeah <laughs> but just all very confidently three subtitles nitro fart thunder right. <laughs> what a selling point <laughs> and he made it stand for nft it is what it is he took, oh, NFT. It is. <laughs> he took nft and then sculpted something in response to it and just wow it's very meta <laughs> he's a zbrush instructor <laughs> oh hell yeah. yeah oh wow what a legend yeah Oh dear lord, what happened to that muscle? <laughs> Got deformed, right? Got to paint some skin weights on it. Yep, shoulders are the, the hardest part to get to look right on the on the rig. Simply because of like think about how much they can go anywhere, right? Oh, that's interesting. 
Okay, if you're gonna work on the shoulder, then I'm curious to see that because, uh, oh my god. Oh, I was not gonna work on the shoulder okay, right okay. now. I was, just, I was just. I can wait on it. I was I in my guy. Yeah. I I have another question about the Alex rig. Why hmm. why does she have like joints that go from her hands to a spot like on the ground? That's probably uh, oh to a spot on the ground. That's usually yeah. like um right like a holster origin. position. So like. If you if you have anything that's going to pick up something, then uh, you need like you need a joint where it's going to pick it up, you know. Um, but if the if the joint position is on the ground, that's a little bit different. That's a little bit different because it's it's a VR game, right? Yeah. So it kind of makes me think that it has something to do with that. Like that might be um, the position that it uh, it kind of snaps things to. Do do, do you know how the game ends? No. Okay. So <laughs> really <laughs> stuck. So I won't say anything else about it. <laughs> but yeah, but there, there's there's a uh, yeah, there's probably a reason. Okay. Interesting. It's probably like a gameplay reason though. Yeah. All right. Well, Mike, thank you. I'm gonna go oh, lie down. Money. Sounds good. <laughs> I hope you good. eat food. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I am. Yes. And uh, yeah, see you next week. Oh, yeah. Um, so we we're just turning in our ex the basically the JPEG we're exporting from. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I was surprised no one else did a bloody shield. I thought like we'd all have bloody shields. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm, I'm just like, oh, I might that. You might have inspired people though. They might <laughs> they might do that instead. It, it was surprisingly pretty straightforward, you know, just right? to get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just like, oh, just keep going. Or if you could change it to like blue goop or something, or like whatever, you know, yeah. but it's like half ah, blood. <laughs> yeah. the, Not really the... into the carbon fiber. <laughs> <laughs> you like that like racing shield, you know? You got yeah. this carbon chassis or whatever mm -hmm. but yeah yeah it's really cool to see what everyone else has come up with right because like, we don't get much of that in this class this is like the the one time where there's like not a project <laughs> due immediately like after so it's sorry I'm just laughing at seeing that guy's face yeah. <laughs> <laughs> incredible but yeah the whoever submitted the bunny one that was it's very nice the tall uh, yeah man. yeah that's uh, okay. oh, Raphael, you got a fan. You got a fan. Nice. Let's go. Good, oh, yeah. good uh, stylization. And I like how you did the, the sweater and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. I completely agree. This is super mm -hmm. sick. See Keely's carbon fiber shield up close. <laughs> <laughs> You know what was the funniest part was that I was streaming on Discord for my buddies again, like the one I do the spoon for, <laughs> and then they just see me like painting the shield and like, so yeah. are you okay? I'm like, oh yeah, I'm having the time of my life. I'm like, I'm just figuring out the heights to see if like the blood would stick on the shield if it's fresher or the, if it's more dry. Yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> it looks like it has funny. like actual human matter on it. You know, know. it's like, oh <laughs> yeah, Ooh. yeah, it looks so like. 3d there's, there's a lot happening on there and i was like okay what did dexter say in that show like a blood splatter you know like it'll go in one direction if it's cut from like a certain major artery or something like that i was like yeah oh, i'll just damn. go for it but it was just like a simple like rough brush that came from it and i was just like uh going through and then erasing a little bit and then adding it and i was like ah oh, that works Hell so, yeah. Yeah, there's like actual matter on the middle part. It's like, yeah, I was like, I was looking at some of these. I was like, oh man. <laughs> yeah. Does yeah. that someone, happen? Someone had a bad day for <laughs> yeah. sure. That's yeah. really good too. The right? Part. There's yeah. some, some sick projects in here. Frick. I wonder, this was Susie's. Yeah. I wonder if she just puts the shading a little bit on the upper eye. It will help with the like the, glare the, over. Yeah. The sticky. Yeah. Yeah. Getting a little bit of, uh, like gentle strokes over that yeah 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 because it's like it feels like it's one color right now but mm -hmm. if you look at the pupil of a mountain lion it's like there's many things happening and mm -hmm. um because eyes are translucent so it'll be nice to see maybe just a little bit more yeah but yeah it looks so good yeah right uh, everything else is like so so well done 
yeah. But yeah, there's like like gleam on the tongue and everything, and like right, the inner part. Shininess. Yeah, <laughs> the teeth are they're shinier too as well. And it has like oh, that gums. beautiful fade on the teeth, and I was mm-hmm. like, wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She's a killer, dude. She's mm-hmm. a killer. Did a lot. Looks good. But yeah, there's so many cool ones in here. Yeah. Right, this one's so fun too. I love like the the proportions on this. <laughs> nice shapes for sure. Yeah. Yeah. The hair. The hair too. Yeah. That's difficult. <laughs> a lot of painting on there but yeah uh, i'm so excited to see everything come together mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all right anyway i'll let you go mike have all a right. good night go you eat. too <laughs> okay, sounds good I'll goodbye see, everyone i'll see and, y'all bye. later enjoy looking at nitro far thunder have a good week bye <laughs> thank you for Thanks blessing us mike you have a good weekend <laughs> yeah you too have mike i have one more question i'm oh, yeah. sorry i have Absolutely. a disease that makes me only think about half-life um, that's fine that's fine what, I, curiosity what is, the, is great what is the deal with this joint that is it like projects out of her face a bit that one i think might be some sort of um aim thing for vr specifically i think a lot of those joints are probably for vr specifically mm-hmm. um did you post it in general uh do you want me to just screen share it um yeah or- is this one right yeah that one yeah i'm thinking that's got to be some sort of vr thing like maybe they have like a menu that pops up that's parented to that uh joint right there or something like some sort of ui element even uh you might have uh i don't know there could be like a plethora of things like there's something that's probably getting attached to that at some point i mean I'm, i would think Good. Um... You wouldn't use that to like track something. That would be more like a script thing, right? That would be more script, yeah. Maybe, does is there any part where like a head crab jumps and then latches onto your face? Cause then it um, could get parented to that joint. You wanna try and avoid those parts as much as possible. <laughs> but I'm, I'm thinking that maybe there's, it would there's no to script, that joint. You know? There's no scripted part where that happens, but if you're not careful, it can happen. Yeah, yeah. I, I would think it's some might be something like that. Like something is getting parented to that joint at some point in the game. Um, or something's like using it as like a like a pointer. Yeah, something like that. Head crabs come here. Yeah, like <laughs> latch onto this joint, please. <laughs> Let's see. Let give it a oh, shot. Oh, you know, that's great too, because that looks like it's about the distance away. Hmm. I wonder. I, I don't know how close the camera is to that, you know? The the camera, there's about this much, about this much distance from like your face to the front of the headset. Okay. I don't know, just like eyeballing it, it does look like there's enough room in there that it would be telling, you know, anything jumping for your face should go right here should specifically because it thinks that the front of your face is actually a couple a little bit, a little bit inches forward farther forward. away. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. I don't know. That, that'd be my guess, but I haven't played it myself, you know, so I couldn't. Also, like, I don't know what they're doing behind the scenes. This is just my, my guess as a game dev, you know, so. This is also interesting because there's like, there's no like arms. It's only hands. Mm-hmm. So I don't even know. My thinking is that probably not much of this is drawn. Mm-hmm. They they might use it for shadows as well. Yeah. If you're like actually walking, there through. are no shadows. I realized this when oh, I was really? holding something and there was just a floating shadow of the thing I was holding. I was like, it took me oh. until I was like, there's no. <laughs> I did not realize that I did not have a shadow until I was holding something that cast one. Damn. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. So it, it's not used for shadows. This must be like in some sort of cinematic then, I guess. That's, that's like my only thought. Or, or oh, if there's a mirror, you'd see a reflection of yourself. Then you'd need this this character in the scene. Shrimp interesting. It's one of those on the chest, too. What the, what the heck? We may never know. <laughs> but yeah yeah you can really see how high poly these characters are though like yeah yeah damn we are getting detailed these days especially if you're gonna be like looking at them like mm-hmm. 
at you. Like close, like like if you kill an enemy, you can like pick it up and bring it close to you. I bet. So that's that's part of what's fun about it because like Source Engine is known for its ragdolls. I'm pretty sure it's safe to say it's just like you can pick those dudes up now and just check them out and be like, wow, look, look how HD these guys are. Oh my yeah, god, it's so sick. <laughs> you're the size of me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Very exciting. If a little befuddling at times. Definitely befuddling. For sure. All right, y'all. Okay. I'm going to head out. I just have one last question. Yeah, what's up? So I was going to think of putting a gas mask on the character. Mm -hmm. Would you say it's like technically too late for that? Or would I do the same process where I go to... Um, not ZBrush, Substance Painter to change the configuration if I were to add a gas mask? Uh, Dave, nah, just uh, Maya, watch, I'll make a, I'll wait, I'll make a lame gas mask right now. Uh, boom, bang, delete, oops, deleted too much. Right there, delete that, control D, Wait, whoops, sorry, not control D. Not control D at all. Looking for face mode, control E, there you go. Boom, you just make your, your gas mask, you UV unwrap it, and then uh, you can just go put it on your character and wherever this head control is, you do child, then parent, then P. So now it just follows that control around nicely okay you don't have to don't have to worry about any sort of like re-texturing stuff you can just straight up make it as a separate object and just attach it to the character like that uh for a gas mask at least something like the like a like the suspender you know that'd probably be more with the character from the start yeah you know? uh but yeah okay thank you mike no problem no problem all right if there's no other questions, I'm heading out. All right. See you later, y'all. Good Adios. class. Thank Good you. Class. No problem. See you next week. <laughs>